Chapter 101, 99, set in motion. Sunaid comes down and stares at Izuna. Explain. Then, listen. Sund, you must be aware of the great toad sage of Mount Mayaboku. Sunaid nods her head. He divined a prophecy for Jiraiya, a few years ago. Exactly, he summoned me to his abode and divined a prophecy for me. Many powerful otherworldly invaders will attack the shinobi world. He also prophesied about the fourth shinobi war. I am not sure of the exact time, but there will be a brutal war in the future. So, in order to prepare for the future, I want you to grow stronger. I don't want any friends and family to lose their lives in the war. Tsunade you are one of the few people close to me, I don't want you to get hurt. That's why Tsunade you should train in sage mode. Your creation rebirth seal is imperfect. With the help of sage mode, you will be able to perfect it and avoid the side effect. Tsunade closes her eyes as memories of previous wars flashed in her mind. The image of Dan and Nawaki appeared in her mind, which overlapped with that of Izuna. Tsunade clenched her fist and resolutely stood up. Fine, I will start my training in sage mode. Izuna wraps his hand around Tsunade and teleports from the treetop. He appears in front of Katsuyu. Lady Katsuyu, I have convinced Tsunade. She will start her training from tomorrow onwards. Katsuyu nods her optical tentacles. Thank you, Izunakan. Okay, then farewell. Izuna places his hand on Tsunade's shoulder and prepares to teleport to Konoha. I will reverse summon myself tomorrow, Tsunade informs Katsuyu before teleporting away. Katsuyu looks at Izuna and Tsunade's pair. They would make a perfect couple if only Tsunade was a little younger. Katsuyu sighs and enters inside her cave. For the next few days, Izuna trains both Suzuki and Naruto. Shisui and Itaki are out on an Ambu mission in Land of Woods. Hiruzen orders them to seek an alliance with the Prejna group and Ambu group of Land of Woods. Izuna stares at Suzuki and Naruto, who are hanging upside down on a tree. He is training their chakra control. Izuna has tied their hands and legs. They have to maintain their position without falling. Things are progressing way too faster. Since I have dealt with Danzo, there won't be any violent massacre. But the ambition of those old geezers of clan. Sigh. Izuna remembers his previous clan meeting where he tried to talk the elders of Uchiha clan down. If they don't want to cooperate, then I can only let Shisui put them into a genjutsu and manipulate them. Izuna sighs and continues to provide tips to Naruto and Suzuki. Both of them continue to fall and climb back again. Inside the private room besides Hokage's office, Hiruzen, Koharu, and Homura sat around a table and discuss important matters. It has been a year since Danzo went missing. We assume that he is dead. Whoever did it, he did a clean job. Homura sighs and laments at Danzo's loss. But to think, Danzo had such dealings. He was involved in most of the schemes and plots against the village. We have been raising a serpent all along. His hunger for power was too intense. Koharu sighs and rests against the chair. Our era is over. It is time to pass our responsibilities to the next generation. What do you think about it? Hiruzen picks up his pipe and smokes. There is no suitable candidate for Hokage's position. However, I would like to make Sakumo take as the new village elder. He will replace Danzo's position in the elder council. What are your thoughts on this matter? Hiruzen continues. Koharu and Homura contemplate before nodding in affirmation. We agree with your decision. Let us hold a council meeting tomorrow and declare it. Hiruzen takes a deep puff from his pipe and places it on the table. He takes out a report and presents it to them. Now, let's talk about serious matter. The elders of the Uchiha clan are planning something. Whatever it is, it is not favorable for the village. Homura picks up the report and reads it. We have no valid proof against them. We can't take any action recklessly. We need to increase surveillance of the Uchiha clan. He suggests. Yes, I will deploy another Ambu team to monitor them. Danzo's schemes have caused quite a problem for us. If we fail to deal with the situation effectively, then it may spell another ninja war. Kanaha isn't ready for another war. The previous war and the Nine Tails incident had exhausted our village. Hiruzen sighs again. I will think of a solution to this matter and inform you later. We can't allow another major incident in the village. Hiruzen stands up and walks towards his office. Kohara and Homura depart shortly. A month passed in the blink of an eye. Aizuna regularly visits Aunt Fumiko to check on her. Aunt Fumiko is in the fourth month of her pregnancy. It will be a while before the baby will be born. Aizuna regularly reports to Tsunade, who is training sage mode in Shikotsu Forest. Her progress is relatively slow compared to Aizuna. She has to use the slug oil to aid in the absorption of nature energy. Despite her efforts, she is still stuck at the first step of sage mode. It will take her a while to sense nature energy effortlessly. Aizuna teleports back to the village. He stands on top of the Hokage Monument and stares at the village. Time to bid farewell. I will train for another four months and I will return before the birth of my sibling. Mount Mayaboko is still the ideal place to train in nature transformations. I have progressed a lot in the Kekai Tota release. Beside dust release and power release, I will be able to use another Kekai Tota soon. An icy blue flame appears in his hand. The flame flickers for a while before it extinguishes completely. This combination of fire release and ice release is still unstable. I have to figure out the correct chakra ratio and conditions to stabilize it. For now, I will name it as Arctic Release. Yes, Arctic Release seems suitable. Aizuna clenches his fist and teleports from the village. He reappears inside Mount Mayaboku. Fukazaka hops towards him and greets him. You are back, Aizuna boy. 
Will you continue your nature transformation training? You are quite close to attaining another Kekai Tota. I will help with your training. Few Kazaka claps his hands and enters sage mode. Aizuna boy, I will able to sense changes in your chakra more easily this way. Now start your training. Aizuna activates his sherry non to observe the ratio of chakra. He infused fire release from one hand and ice release from another. Blue flames forms in between his hands. Aizuna infuses more chakra into the jutsu to make it bigger. This surge of chakra destabilized the jutsu, and it exploded on him. Boom. One of his hand froze, and another got charred. He quickly healed his hand and started again. Boom. Again. Boom. Again. The training continues for another month. Aizuna continues to practice the arctic release. Many people spent their entire life to figure out a nature transformation. The second Suchikage developed the dust release and passed it on to the third Suchikage. It was his greatest achievement. Inside the Ambu headquarters, Hiruzen summons Shisui and Itaki. Both of them flickers before him and bow to him. They await further orders from Hiruzen. Hiruzen turns towards them and speaks. Shisui Uchiha and Itaki Uchiha. Both of you are an excellent member of Ambu. Your achievements in this past year marveled me. Your capabilities only lie short to Aizuna Uchiha. Hiruzen looks towards Shisui and nods. Your grandfather Kagami Uchiha was a close aide of second Hokage Tobirama Senju. He was my senior and a close friend. You have grown quite well, and I hope you follow Kagami's example. The will of fire burns brighter within both of you. I don't want the village to engulf in chaos and flames of hatred. Itaka hesitates for a while before he speaks. Hokage-sama, I have something to report to you. Hiruzen stares at Itaki and nods his head. Proceed. Hokage-sama, Fugaku Uchiha, the current leader of the Uchiha clan, and my father ordered me to join Umbu to seek information on the Elder Council. This way, I am acting as a spy for the clan. Hiruzen sighs and rubs his forehead. I can understand your sentiments. You are part of a clan, after all. But remember this, you are also a Kanaha citizen. This entire village is your family. You can't harm them for the sake of your close relatives. However, I am glad that you informed me about this. I will issue a mission to you now. From today onwards, you will act as a spy for me and monitor the Uchiha clan. You will be a double agent this way. Yes, Hokage-sama. I understand. I won't disappoint you. Itaka bows his head. Hokage-sama? Shall I consult with Aizen and Aizen? He was the former Umbu captain. Maybe, he could find a peaceful solution. Hiruzen sighs and reminds Shisui. Aizuna Uchiha is the genius of the Uchiha clan, but he isn't the son of clan leader. He is a disposable piece to elders. Aizuna also understands this. Sometimes, power isn't the only way to govern people. Power and politics go hand by hand. Aizuna Uchiha has power, but he has no political say. Or to be precise, he isn't interested in anything except training. This rank mission is just a disguise for him to train. It would be better if he isn't involved in this. If he turned against the village, then Kanaha will suffer quite a loss. I want to settle the matter peacefully. You two, keep updating me on the latest intel. Yes, Hokage-sama. Both of them nods and flickers out from the headquarter. Hiruzen sighs and stares at the moon. Things have turned quite complicated. I hope it will end peacefully. A slash n, I randomly came up with Arctic release. If anyone has a better suggestion, comment it down below. I will change the name if I liked it. Chapter 102, 100. Coup d'etat. A slash n, we finally did it. Here is the 100th chapter. Sadly, I have an exam tomorrow. So, I won't be able to post tomorrow. I have to prepare for the exam, wink with a frown, inside a secret chamber of Naka Shrine. Many Uchiha clan elders sit on around a table discussing their plans. Asahi, everything is ready, right? One of the clan elders questions a nearby Uchiha clan member. The clan member bows before the elder and reports. Yes, Ajirosama. We have secretly secured lots of kunaus and shurikens from the land of hot water. The preparations are ready, we just need orders from you. Ajiro nods to him and turns towards Fugaku. Fugaku, how are the preparations on your end? If we want to gain control of the village, then we need to deal with Hokage and his Umbu guards. Have you gathered the necessary intel regarding this matter? We have to finish him in a single blow or else things will blow out of proportion. If it alerts other clans, then we would have to face against a combined assault of many other clans. Fugaku looks at the group of clan elders. So, things have turned out this way. Father died because of his sickness, and I became the next clan head. But these clan elders manipulated various members of the clan to gain power and control. I don't even have a say in this matter. It took me a while to realize their ambition. It's too late now, I can only play along with them. I hope Uchiha clan won't suffer much in this conflict. Fugaku nods towards the group of clan elders and informs them. My elder son, Itaki Uchiha, joined Umbu a year ago. He had collected the necessary intel during this time. All the Umbu's patrol duty, team formations, members, and all such. I will call him to provide the information. Fugaku whispers something to a nearby Jounin. The Jounin walks out of the meeting room and comes with Itaki in tow. Itaki, present the intel to clan elders. Itaka bows and greets the clan elders. He forks out a scroll from his pocket and passes it to Ajiro. This is the intel I have collected this past year. There is detailed information about Umbu members, their patrol duties, and even their jutsus. I have inspected every last detail. 
Eijiro schemes through the scroll and rolls it and passes it to another elder. You have quite a talented son, Fugaku. He had grown in an excellent young man. His wits and intelligence remind me of your father, Fukushi Uchiha. He was such a great man, but he lacked ambition. Otherwise, we wouldn't have fallen in such a state. Let's show the power of the Uchiha clan to these old fools of Konoha. Eijiro clenches his fist. For the clan. Yes, for the clan. The rest of the clan elders follow his lead. So, he is the perpetrator of this incident. Itaka silently stares at Eijiro. I have to report this to Hokage-sama. The clan is on the verge of coup d'etat. If this continues then civil war will erupt in Konoha. I can't allow Suzuki to suffer in the misery of civil war. I have to stop them. Itaka silently retreats. The discussion continues. Eijiro gathers all the members of the Uchiha police force and addresses them. My Uchiha clan members, the village, had discriminated against us. The second Hokage Tobirama Senju hated us. He isolated us to the boundaries of the village. We bear with it. We wholeheartedly served the village, kept the prisoners of Konoha in check. We secured the village as police force, but what did we get in return? Eijiro clenches his fist and slams it on the table. Hatred and suspicion. The villagers fear us for our prowess. They blamed the Ninetales incident on our clan. Forced us to move to the outer boundaries of the village. Not only this, they even left their loyal dog on our tail. Many of you must have noticed the dogs of the village sniffing around our clan. They forced us in a corner. We must retaliate and restore the former glory of Uchiha clan. Eijiro raises his hand passionately. Yes, for the clan. All the Uchiha police force members yell in unison. For the clan. For the clan. Fugaku looks at the members of the Uchiha police force with a conflicted gaze. They are a herd of sheep and Eijiro is their shepherd. It is too late to knock sense into them. Before I could gain the support of the clan members after assuming the position of clan head, a Hiro had already swayed their opinion. I am a clan head only in name. Father, only if you were alive, then things wouldn't have played out like this. Fugaku sighs and turns towards Eijiro. Clan elder Eijiro, how long would it take to prepare for the last confrontation? Soon, it will happen soon. We will set in a week or two. I will inform you later. For now, we will discuss the intel and devise a strategy to effectively deal with Hokage. The discussion continues as the clan elders plots a plan. Inside the Hokage office, Itaka bows before Hiruzen as he reports. I have the latest intel of my spy mission. I would like to inform you of this matter. Hiruzen nods and waves his hand to dismiss the Umbu guards. Later, inside the private room beside Hokage's office, Hiruzen, Koharu, and Homura sit around a table as they listen to the report of Itaki. If they are going to start a revolution and usurp our power, we have no choice but to judge the Uchiha as traitors of the leaf. Koharu concludes. Don't rush to such a decision. Hiruzen interrupts her. We must take measures to avoid the mayhem. Homura agrees with Koharu. Even if we want to stop the revolution of Uchiha, taking on the Uchiha will be no simple task. There's got to be some sort of strategy we can use. We should join forces with other clans and launch a surprise attack on Uchiha from behind. It will be over in no time. Koharu presents her opinion. I want to settle it with words before force. Hiruzen towards Itaki and orders. Itaki, buy me some time, however little it may be. Yes, Hokage-sama. Itaki nods and disappears from his spot. Later inside Umbu headquarters. Shisui and Itaki bows before Hiruzen as Itaki reports to Hiruzen. Hokage-sama? The Uchiha will start their revolution from next week. We have six days to stop this coup. Hiruzen sighs and rubs his forehead. I can't allow the village to fall this easily. It's a failure on my part. If the coup starts, it will embroil the village in a civil war. Our forces will weaken considerably, and other nations won't sit idly. They will use this opportunity to wage war on Kanaha. Kanaha is the strongest hidden village with the most resources. If the coup happens, the fourth shinobi war will be around the corner. But this time, it will be all nations against the land of fire. I don't want such an ending. Itaka continues his report. Hokage-sama, the Uchiha clan elder Eijiro, is the perpetrator behind the coup. If we can deal with him, then we can stop the coup. Hmm, that might be a possibility. But I am sure you are aware of the consequences of this decision. Itaka nods and continues. It won't be enough to quell the hatred build up among the Uchiha clan members. It will only fan the flames and will inevitably lead to a coup. Thus, we are only postponing the inevitable. Shisui quietly listens to their conversation as he is stuck in a dilemma. Should I tell them about the abilities of my Manjikyo Sherinan? Aizun and Aizun warned me to not disclose them. He said, the power of your Sherinan is way too great. It can lead to the greed of power-hungry people who will try to hunt you down to gain your eyes. So, don't disclose your eyes to anyone under any circumstances. But I have to think of a solution to prevent the downfall of Uchiha clan. Shisui continues to ponder over the matter. After pondering for a while, he concludes. For the sake of my family, my friends, and my clan, I have to do it. He turns towards Hiruzen and speaks. Hokage-sama? I have a solution to our problem. Huh. Hiruzen is startled by Shisui's words. He questionably stares at Shisui. Explain. Shisui activates his Manjikyo Sherinan and reveals them to Hiruzen and Itaki. Hiruzen is surprised to see the Manjikyo Sherinan. Manjikyo Sherinan, the forbidden power of the Uchiha clan. Image of Madara Uchiha pops in Hiruzen's mind and his spine shivers. 
The ability of my Mangekyo Sherinan allows me to control a person without their discretion. I will use this ability on Ajiro and manipulate him to quell the revolution. This way, the Uchiha's coup will be repelled. Then slowly, by manipulating Ajiro the hatred of Uchiha clan members will be quenched. Hmm. Hiruzen ponders for a while. It seems to be a quite feasible option. Then, Shisui Uchiha and Itake Uchiha. I will issue this SS rank mission to both of you. Infiltrate the residence of Ajiro Uchiha and manipulate him to repel the rebellion of the Uchiha clan. The survival of the village depends on this mission. Failure isn't an option. Yes, Hokage Sama. Shisui and Itake bows to Hiruzen and flickers out. I hope things will play out as planned. I don't want a repeat of the first Hokage's incident. Hiruzen sighs and looks towards the blue dread moon. Chapter 103, 101. Attack on Uchiha Part 1. Outside Konoha. A cloaked figure stares at the sensing barrier around Konoha. It's time to get back everything. The cloaked figure turns around and stares at a group of cloaked figures. The group wear long, black cloaks with red clouds, a red interior and a chinhai collar. They wore various shades of nail polish on their finger and toenails. There are a total of four members in the group, each with a distinctive feature on their robe. All of them wear a wear conical straw hat with small ornamental torques and tassels hanging down their faces. One member of Akatsuki walks towards the cloaked figure. We will help you with your chore but in return we want nine tails. That's the order from our leader. Then we will walk separate ways. The Akatsuki member tilts his hat and stares at the cloaked figure. I will keep my end of the bargain, but first you need to fulfill your part. The cloaked figure speaks in a hoarse voice. Very well then, keep this in mind. We can easily track you down and obliterate you from existence if you failed on your end of the deal. The Akatsuki member warns the cloaked figure. Hmph, you are a band of mercenaries. I will keep my promise. There is no need to banter about it. The cloaked figure snorts. Good. Then let's move to our task. The group walks towards the Kanaha. The cloaked figure stops the Akatsuki members from entering the village. There is a sensing barrier around the village. It will easily detect the presence of the intruder. But don't worry, I know the key formula, it will be a simple task to bypass the barrier. The cloaked figure approaches the barrier and makes some hand signs. He slams his hand on the barrier. A funjutsu formula appears below his hand and covers a small part of the barrier. A door-sized opening forms in the barrier. The cloaked figure enters inside the village together with the members of Akatsuki. The cloaked figure points in the direction of the Uchiha clan. Our aim is to slaughter the members of the Uchiha clan. Don't destroy their eyes, the eyes are valuable. The cloaked figure reminds them. Now then, let the massacre begin. He laughs maniacally and dashes in a certain direction. Itake and Shisui infiltrate the residence of Ajiro Uchiha. They sneakily enter inside his room and wait for him to appear. Do you think this plan will work? Itake questions Shisui. It should. My Mangekyo Sherinan cast a very powerful Genjutsu Kota Amitsukami, which allows me to manipulate the thoughts of a person without his awareness. Big Brother Aizona helped me train my Mangekyo Sherinan and I can even use the Suzano, the most prized technique of our Uchiha clan. Itake nods to Shisui and mutters to himself. Suzuke, I won't allow anybody to ruin your childhood. Both of them hid inside the room and wait for the elder to appear. Ajiro Uchiha leisurely enters inside the bathhouse of his mansion. He pours a cup of sake and smells the fragrance of sake before gulping in in one go. My useless, idiotic son, I am doing it for his sake. That Fukushi, he snatched the position of clan head from me and got promoted as the clan head. He smashed my dream to become the clan head into a pulp. I could only leave my ambition to my son. But this idiot wastrel, he wasted his life on alcohol and gambling. Fukushi used this opportunity to instate his son Fugaku as the new clan head. Ajiro smashes the cup into a nearby stone. He fills up another cup and gulps it down. Haha, <laughs> I have to celebrate on this occasion. That Fukushi, he would have never thought, his old illness would flare up and claim his life. How could I miss this golden opportunity? I swayed the opinion of other clan elders in my favor with some profits. Now, Fugaku is a clan head only in name. The actual power lies in my hand. But what I want the official position of clan head and gain control of the entire clan. Ajiro laughs hysterically. No, soon it will be the entire village. I will become the new Hokage of the village. Haha. Ha. If only my wastrel son was a little competent. Thankfully, my grandson is smart like me. He is a genin now and will soon become a genin. A smile blooms on his face as the picture of a 12-year-old kid appears in his mind. But that son of Fugaku, I never expected him to be this talented. To be able to join Ambu at the age of 11, that kid is a genius among genius. Sigh. There is also the matter of Aizuna Uchiha, the most talented genius of the Uchiha clan. Ajiro smirks. He is nothing but a dog of the Uchiha clan. He has no political backing or background. He only has a distant relation with Fugaku's family. I will use him to fight against the village, and the other clans will dispose of him. This way, I will kill two birds with one stone. The position of Hokage will soon be in my grasp. Ajiro fantasizes his future days as Hokage. At the Uchiha clan square, the members of Akatsuki discuss among themselves. Who shall we start with? A hunchbacked man questions his group members. Kakuzu, you are the leader of this mission. You shall decide on this matter. Another member comments. There is no money involved in this mission. I hate such kind of missions. But it is the order from our leader, so we have to fulfill it. 
Kakuza removes his hat and the Akatsuki cloak. He removes his cloak to reveal a ragdoll body. There are multiple stitches everywhere in his body. Hundreds of thick, gray tendrils hold his body together. There are four masks sewed on his back. Let's start with the older fellows. They are more troublesome to deal with. The youngster these days are incompetent and can't hold a candle against the old fellows. Kakuzu jumps towards the biggest house and vanishes. This old bastard Kakuzu. There is always money on his mind. He is even attacking the biggest house to rob the money. Sasori snorts at Kakuzu. Sasori, who do you will start with? His partner licks his blade as he curiously looks at Sasori. I will also start with the old fellows. I don't want additional trouble during the mission. Sasori crawls towards another house. Hee <laughs> hee. I will start with young children. I like their cute little screams. The Akatsuki member licks his blade and rushes towards another house. The remaining Akatsuki members shake his head and barge in a nearby house. This bunch of maniacs. Looks like I am the only sane person in this band. Thus, the slaughter starts. Inside Eijiro's mansion. Itaki and Shisui patiently wait for the elder to appear. Kaya. They hear a scream from the bathhouse. Itaki and Shisui immediately dash in the scream's direction. They enter inside the bathhouse and notice the dead body of Eijiro and a servant girl. Shisui and Itaki activate their sherry non and inspect the body. Both of them are killed in a single blow. Itaki approaches the dead body. Their hearts, their hearts and eyes are missing. He flips their body and inspects them. Someone has attacked and killed the clan elder. The killer hasn't gone far enough. Itaki, go and investigate the mansion. I will chase after the killer. The killer is quite vicious, I will stop him. Shisui follows the traces of the killer and dashes out of the bathhouse. Itaki lays the body of the dead and investigates the house. He comes across a broken safe in one of the room. Itaki inspects the safe. All the money and valuables are gone. What is the motive of the killer? Was he after the money? Then did the killer steal their eyes and hearts? Shisui follows the trail and enters inside another mansion. He notices a similar scene in this mansion, too. The eyes and hearts of all the inhabitants of the house are ripped apart from their body and the safe of the house is looted. Damn, I am slower by a step. This killer is quite skilled. He must be an ranked shinobi. But this brutal way of killing, there is a record of such case in Umbu records. Shisui continues to chase after the killer as he recalls the records of the Umbu. He enters another house to see a similar carnage. I remembered it now. This method of inhumane killing, it is Kakuzu of Hidden Waterfall Village. The rogue shinobi who fought and survived against the first Hokage. Shisui recalls detailed information regarding Kakuzu. What is he doing here in the Hidden Leaf? Slaughtering the Uchiha clan nonetheless. I must stop him. Shisui jumps on top of a house and activates his Manjikyo Sharinan. He makes some hand signs. Lightning style, flicker flash. Shisui coats his legs in lightning chakra and dashes towards a house. Chapter 104, 102. Attack on Uchiha Part 2. A slash N, sorry for missing yesterday. Destiny 2, released beyond light yesterday. I was hooked up with it. So, I couldn't post the chapter. We'll post another chapter in few more hours. The cloaked figure approaches in front of Izuna's house. He looks towards the house. Izuna Uchiha, you made me suffer hellish pain, now I will return the favor. All your family members and friends will become the sacrifice to soothe my eternal agony. The cloaked figure walks towards the gates of the house. He takes a step inside the house, a dome-shaped barrier stops his march. The cloaked man retreats and stares at the crimson barrier. A defensive barrier? You sure are cautious, Izuna Uchiha. Let me see how long will this barrier last. You won't be able to stop me from having my revenge. It's payback time. The cloaked man clenches his fist and smashes it in the barrier. The barrier shakes violently but is able to hold against the attack. The cloaked man flips his hand. A kunao appear in his hand. He coats the kunao in wind chakra and stabs it in the barrier. Some cracks appear in the barrier. The cloaked figure continues to stab at the same spot. The crack widens, and the barrier weakens. Haya. The cloaked figures give a final push, and the barrier disperses. It's time to return the agony. The cloaked figure enters the house. At Mount Mayaboku, Izuna is sitting on the top of a tall tree while staring at the moon. The air is a bit chilly tonight. The blood moon? It signifies death and slaughter. It signifies the beginning of the end. Izuna takes support against a branch and stares at the stars. I have mastered the Arctic release during this time. My sibling will be born in almost a month. I will return early to take care of Aunt Fumiko. I want a cute little sister. I was a single child in my previous life and my parents left me early. Ha. Huh. Now I have a family and friends that cherish me. I won't allow any harm to befall on them. Crack. A bracelet on Izuna's wrist shatters into pieces. This startles Izuna. He immediately looks at the broken bracelet. This bracelet is the sealing formula of the barrier around my house. It shattered, which means the barrier is destroyed. My parents are in danger. I have to return to the village immediately. Izuna immediately teleports to his house. Kakuzo continues to rob one house after another. He killed the members of the Uchiha clan effortlessly and stole their hearts and eyes. These Uchihas are quite rich. I have made a fortune. It was wise of me to accept this mission from the leader. I can live leisurely for my entire life without worrying about money. Kakuzo counts a stack of money and tosses them in a scroll in his hand and dashes towards another house. Swoosh. Lightning release, Chimei Teki Senbon. 
A concentrated senbon of lightning chakra shoots towards Kakuzu. Ah, earth release, earth spear. Kakuzu immediately passes chakra through his body. His body turns darker and hardens. Kakuzu jumps to avoid the senbon, but it manages to pierce through his hardened body. The senbon pierces Kakuzu's heart and strikes the ground. It creates a deep crater in the ground and lightning flickers inside the crater. That's one life down. Shisui appears a distance away from Kakuzu and warily looks at him. This guy is a monster with five lives. Big brother Izuna warned me to not engage against this guy in close combat. Ha, ah, earth grudge fear. Kakuzu bends down. The various animal masks on his back breathe alive and their heart beats furiously. The four animal mask struggles and escapes from Kakuzu's body. Many thread-like structures escape together with the mask and form strange creatures from them. One of the masks took on the shape of a demonic tiger. Another mask takes the form of a deformed bipedal. The third mask shapes into a demonic beaked bipedal. The fourth mask takes the form of a strange four-legged body with thin wings. The wound near Kakuzu's heart closes. The demonic beaked bipedal mask shatters and crumbles into the dust. The creature turns into a pool of black threads. Kakuzu stands up and dusts his clothes. He stares at Shisui and remarks. Not bad, you killed me once. But will you be able to do it four more times? I don't know how you got intel on me, but it doesn't matter. I will replace my lost heart with yours. You will be a fine collection to my heart. All your power and vitality will be mine. Kakuzu takes out a kunao from his holster and dashes towards Shisui. Shisui draws his blade and engages in combat with Kakuzu. He continues to monitor the remaining three animal masks with his sherry non. The deformed bipedal mask appears behind him and opens its mouth. Lightning release, false darkness. The animal mask emits the lightning chakra in the shape of a spear. Multiple lightning bolts join together and form many lightning spears. The jutsu travels at an astonishing speed, making it hard to evade. Shadow flicker. Shisui's body turns blurry and disappears from the spot. The lightning pierces the blurry shadow and strikes a wall and shatters it into dust. After image clone. Multiple copies of Shisui appear around Kakuzu. All of them attack Kakuzu at simultaneously. Kakuzu struggles against the various images of Shisui. Wind release, pressure damage. Earth release, earth spear. The strange four-legged animal mask creature appears beside Kakuzu. The mask opens its mouth wide and releases a powerful gust of wind compressed into a tornado-like mass. This jutsu covers a large area and the blast inflict extensive damage to the surroundings. Kakuzu hardens his body and comes out unscathed from the blast. The multiple afterimages and clones of Shisui disperse. Shisui jumps back to avoid contact with the blast radius. Fire style, intelligent hard work. The demonic tiger mask appears behind Shisui and opens its mouth wide. It fires a small fireball that erupts into a giant firestorm and covers a large area. Shisui immediately makes a few hand signs and faces the firestorm. Water release, searing torrent. Shisui release a massive vortex of water. The vortex collides with the firestorm and both of them cancel each other out. The evaporation of water releases lots of mist and forms a mist barrier. Bang. Kakuzu's leg burrows out from the ground and kicks Shisui. It hurls Shisui back, and he rams into a nearby wall. Inside the clan leader's residence, Fugaku opens his eyes and stands up from the bed. The commotion from the earlier fight has reached his ears. Mikato opens her eyes and grabs the sleeve of Fugaku. Fugaku strokes Mikato's face and speaks. The clan is under attack. I have to face the intruder. Stay back and take care of Suzuki. Don't let him get hurt in the commotion. Mikato nods and warily replies. Take care. Hum. Fugaku nods his head and flickers out from the room. Mikato stares at his departing back and murmurs to herself. Itaki, take care of yourself. She stands up and walks towards Suzuki's room. Mikato gently opens the door of Suzuki's room and enters inside. Suzuki is sleeping soundly on the bed. Big brother, teach me a new jutsu. Suzuki murmurs in his sleep. Ha ha, ho ho. Mikato chuckles softly and covers Suzuki in the blanket. This naughty boy, he always thinks about training. Mikato lies beside Suzuki and gently caresses his face. Awa, wa. Suzuki turns in his sleep and hugs the blanket. Fugaku appears outside his house. He jumps on the rooftop of a nearby house and climbs on top of a long pole. He activates his sherry non and inspects the surroundings. Soon, he notices a hunchbacked man draped in a black cloak with a red cloud pattern on his robe. A giant metallic tail dangles behind the man. The metallic tail is soaked in the blood, and the hunchbacked man crawls out of the house. A frown appears on Fugaku's face. Boom. Fugaku hears a large explosion in another corner of the clan district. Looks like an intense fight is happening there. It seems that someone is engaged with another intruder. Let me quickly finish this one and I will help the other person. Fugaku jumps down from the pole and flickers towards the hunchbacked man. He quickly makes some hand signs. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. Fugaku fires a giant fireball at the hunchbacked man. Humph. The hunchbacked man turns around and faces the fireball. He opens his mouth wide and a small pipe-like structure juts out from it. The pipe fires a pressured stream of water and cancels the fireball. A puppet user. Fugaku approaches the puppet and warily stares at the intruder. Chapter 105, 103. Attack on Uchiha Part 3. Clank. Fugaku draws out a kunao from his holster and blocks the attack from the scorpion-like long iron tail. The tails rotate again and stab towards Fugaku. Clank. 
Fugaku blocks another attack from the tail. He notices a purple glint on the tip of the tail. Poison. Fugaku frowns and jumps back. He throws many kunaus at the puppet. Clank, clank, clank. The tails blocks all the kunaus. The puppet opens its mouth and launch a barrage of senbon at Fugaku. Fugaku easily evades the barrage of senbon. The weakness of a puppet user lies in close combat. No matter how hard you try, you can't overcome this weakness with that weak shell of yours. Fugaku runs towards the puppet. He coats his kunao in the lightning chakra and attacks the puppet. Lightning release, Kamaidaki claw. He forms a sickle with the lightning chakra and slashes it at the puppet. Clank. The Hiriko, name of the puppet, raises its tail to block the attack. Kuka. Fugaku slash apart the tail, and he continues to attack the top of the puppet. Clang. The cloak of the puppet rips and reveals a heavy defensive shell. Hiriko retracts the broken tail and stretches its left arm to reveal a torpedo-like artillery shell. Swoosh, fwoosh. The artillery chases Fugaku. He jumps back to avoid a direct hit. The mechanism of torpedo triggers to launch a shrapnel barrage of senbon. Fugaku dodges the senbon and approaches Hiriko. He quickly makes some hand signs. Lightning release, Raijin's wrath. Fugaku fires a concentrated bolt of lightning. The lightning bolt takes the form of an arrow and pierces the hard shell of the puppet. Boom. The puppet explodes into pieces. A cloaked figure jumps out from the remains of the puppet. So, the puppeteer has finally shown himself. What's your motive behind attacking my Uchiha clan? Fugaku intensely glares at the cloaked figure. The puppeteer removes the remains of the puppet from his body and reveals his face. Fugaku immediately identifies the culprit. Wait, you are Sasori of the Sand. What are you doing in the leaf? Attacking my clan no less. Fugaku gets serious since Sasori has quite a reputation in hidden villages. Sasori nonchalantly looks at the remains of his puppet. What a waste of such fine art and craftsmanship. Sasori flicks his right hand. Various chakra thread appears among them. He quickly pulls the remains of his puppet and stores them into a scroll. He faces Fugaku and remarks. You are strong, Wikdai Fugaku, the leader of the Uchiha clan. You are worthy to face against one of my most prized possession. Sasori rolls out a scroll from his sleeve. A collection that gave me a hard time when trying to kill it, but the effort was worth it. Poof. A large amount of smoke covers Fugaku's vision. The smoke disperses to reveal another puppet. Fugaku's eyes widen as he stares at the new puppet. That's, that's the third Kaze cage who went missing a few years ago. Fugaku warily stares at Sasori. I never expected, you killed the third Kaze cage and turned his body into a puppet. Fugaku clenches his kunao tightly and enters in a combat stance. The Kaze cage puppet immediately dashes towards Fugaku. Sasori waves his hands and skillfully controls the movements of the puppet. The right arm of the puppet turns into multiple blades coated in poison. Clank. Fugaku blocks the blades with his kunao. SRRRR. He channels lightning chakra through his kunao and slashes apart the blades. The puppet attacks him with its left hand. Fugaku jumps back and avoids the attack. The left arm opens up and reveals several summoning seals. The seals glow and summons thousands of similar arms. All the arms turn towards Fugaku and attack him. Fugaku slices them apart with his lightning blade. The openings on the arms fire a barrage of kunaos, shurikens, and senbons at Fugaku. Fugaku calmly stares at the incoming barrage of projectiles. Sherinon, Eye of Insight. The tomo in his eyes spins rapidly. Everything slows down for him, his perception reaches incredible heights. Clank, 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 clank. Fugaku deflects one projectile after another. After a minute, he stands perfectly with no scratches or injuries on him. Suddenly, one of the openings of arms throws a small canister towards Fugaku. Fugaku slashes the canister in half. Purple color gas leaks from the poison. It quickly spread and covers Fugaku. Fugaku immediately makes some hand signs. Wind style, great breakthrough. Fugaku blows away the poison mist. Cough, cough. I accidentally inhaled a small quantity of this poison. I have to quickly end the fight before the poison takes effect. Swish, swish. Multiple kunaos with explosive tags tied to them surround Fugaku. Bang. The paper bombs explode and cover the place in smoke and debris. You will be a fine collection to my art, Fugaku Uchiha. Cough, cough. Shisui coughs a little and slowly stands up. He has a smirk on his face as he looks at Kakuzu. Chirp, Kai, stab. A shadow appears behind the lightning mask and stabs it from behind. Lightning release, Chidori Rakery. The shadow pierces through the lightning mask. Throb, throb. The heartbeat of lightning mask throbs for a while before the mask shatters into countless pieces. The lightning mask creature falls lifelessly on the ground. Kakashi Senpai's technique is quite handy. I wonder why Aizun and Aizen never uses it. Well, he has plenty of jutsus in his arsenal. The shadow disperses as Kakuzu stares at Shisui with wide eyes. You kid, you made me lose two of my hearts. Now, I need to kill another powerful shinobi and rip apart his heart beside you. Kakuzu inspects the features of Shisui. I remember you now, Shisui the teleporter. There is a bounty of 50 million ryo on your head. How can I miss such a cash grab? It will be a double paycheck, your heart and bounty money will be mine. It's time to get serious or I will miss this bag of money. Kakuzu stretches out his hand. Various black threads flicker from his hand. The remaining two wind mask and fire mask appear beside him. Kakuzu claps his hands together. 
Earth Grudge Fear, Fusion. Various tendrils extend from the two creatures. The tendrils connect and the fire mask and the wind mask fuses. Kakuzu makes more hand signs. Wind release, pressure damage. The wind mask fires a barrage of wind blasts at Shisui. Shisui jumps around and dodges all the attacks. Fire release, intelligent hard work. The fire mask spews out a wide area firestorm at Shisui to prevent his escape. Water style, searing torrent. Shisui cancels the firestorm with his jutsu. I need to get closer to him to finish him off. He still has three lives remaining. But this continuous barrage of jutsus and his almost endless chakra is making it difficult for me to approach him. The combo of wind and fire mask chases after Shisui. Shisui closes the gap between Kakuzo and him and engages in close combat with him. Clank, clank. He trades a few blows with Kakuzo and jumps up to avoid the attack of the wind mask. Kakuzo hardens his body and sustains the attack with no damage. Kakuzo stretches his hardened right hand and attacks Shisui from a distance. Lightning release techniques are his weakness. I have to take advantage of it. Kai. Shisui throws a kunao in the air and blocks the right hand of Kakuzo with his blade. Shisui does a somersault and grabs the kunao. He infuses lightning chakra in the kunao and slashes the arm of Kakuzo apart. The arm fell on the ground and the thread-like structure wriggles from the arm. Boom. Shisui avoids another attack from the wind mask creature. Kakuzo retrieves his right hand and joins it back. That's almost cheating. This guy can reconnect his limbs. Shisui jumps back and avoids another attack from the fire mask. The masked creature appears behind Shisui. Both the masks open their mouths simultaneously and release a dual attack. Fire wind combo strike, strange mask exploding flame. Boom. The intense pressure from the attack creates large gusts of winds as a massive firestorm covers a large area. The attack quickly approaches Shisui. I won't be able to counter this attack with water release alone. Boom. The jutsu explodes on contact with Shisui and wreaks havoc on surrounding buildings. A massive crater appears at Shisui's position. Dust and debris fog the vision. The dust and debris settle down to reveal. Chapter 106, 104. Attack on Uchiha Part 4. Ah, uh, help me. Somebody help. No. Ah. Uh, Itaka hears a scream from a nearby house. He frowns and immediately runs in the scream's direction. Itaka reaches the destination and enters inside a house. He notices blood painted everywhere on the walls of the house. The bodies of the residents are dismembered and their body parts are spread everywhere. Itaka feels the insides of his stomach churning as he feels an urge to vomit. He had done many dirt deeds in Umbu and assassinated lots of people during this time. But never in his life has he seen such a gruesome way of killing. Itaka calms down his nerves and holds himself steady to not throw up. He continues to inspect the house and reaches upstairs. Barf. Itaka couldn't help but barf when he saw the gruesome state of the girl. Itaka clutches his kunao tightly and thinks about Izumi. Her house is nearby. I can't allow the criminal to attack her. He immediately jumps out of the window and runs towards Izumi's house. Inside Izumi's house. Izumi is shivering while staring at the killer. The black cloaked man licks his kunao, which is soaked in blood, and stares at Izumi. It's your turn now. I like the carbon content of children more. It is so fresh and pure. That old granny tasted gross. Dina looks at the dismembered body of an old woman. Tui. He spits out his saliva. The appetizer ruined my mood. But the main course looks more appetizing. Izumi lifelessly looks at the dead body of her grandma. His mother is out on a mission and she had lost her father during the Nine Tails incident. Izumi was alone in her house together with her grandma. No, grandma. Sob, sob. Izumi sobs as she stares at her grandma. Why? Why did you kill my grandma? Izumi furiously looks at Dina. I will kill you. My grandma. She draws a kunao and dashes towards Dina. Izumi activates her sherinan and attacks him. She slashes her kunao at the killer. Dina licks his tongue. Another food on my table. Today is a feast. He easily parries Izumi's kunao and grabs her arms. He lifts Izumi in the air with one hand and makes a blade of carbon in another. Let me enjoy my food. He slashes the carbon blade towards Izumi. Clank. Another kunao blocks his attack. Oh. Dina is surprised and turns towards the newcomer. Itaka blocks the attack and saves Izumi. Everything would be fine. I am here. Don't worry. Izumi weakly stares at Itaka's back and nods. Her vision turns blurry. A large amount of chakra riles up in her body and enters into her eyes. The strain from the chakra causes Izumi to faint. Itaka looks at the dismembered body of the grandma. Anger clouds his mind, but he doesn't allow it to overpower his senses. He is one of the members of Akatsuki. So, that means he is an s rank criminal at the least. Itaka stares at the red cloud pattern on Dina's cloak. Izuna has already informed about Akatsuki's members. His name is not on Big Brother's list. That means he joined Akatsuki recently. I have to fight cautiously or else I may lose my life. Then there is Izumi, I have to protect her too. He killed grandma and lots of other clansmen. I have to stop him from slaughtering any more persons. I have sent a signal to Umbu headquarters. It will take a while for the backup to arrive. A large amount of chakra riles up in his body, and it channels towards his eye. Itaka clutches his kunao and makes some hand signs. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. Itaka spews out a giant fireball at Dina. Boom. The house turns into rubbles from the blast. He grabs Izumi and jumps out from the house. Cuckoo. Dina walks unscathed from the fireball. 
There is a large black colored shield in front of him. Carbon control, black diamond shield. Some smoke is rising from the shield, but there is no scratch on it. He molds the shield into a black solid construct. The solid enters inside his body. Human body is made of about 18% carbon. My ability allows me to manipulate the carbon and use it in battle. I can also steal carbon from other people's body. Now, give your carbon to me. Dina shapes the black solid into a blade and dash towards Itaki. Clank. Itaki blocks the attack with his kunao. Is your kunao stronger than a diamond? The blade glistens and the kunao snaps in half. Itaki jumps back and avoids the slash. He can freely manipulate the carbon in his body. He can shape the carbon within his body into a shield to block any attack or turn it into a weapon for attack. I haven't seen him using the carbon as a projectile. Maybe he isn't capable of that feat. Itaka calmly analyzes the technique of Dina. Normal metal weapons won't have any effect on his weapon. But what about Chakra? Itaka makes a shadow clone and nods to it. The shadow clone grabs Izumi and runs away from the location. Where are you running? My food. Stay here. Dina dashes towards the shadow clone. Fire style, Phoenix Flower Jutsu. Itaka fires numerous fireballs rapidly at Dina. TCH. Dina clicks his tongue and makes a giant shield to block the attack. I will let you get away for now. First, let me deal with the nuisance. Chirp, Kai, stab. Itaki appears behind Dina and stabs his body. Dina's eyes widen as he looks at an exhausted Itaki in front of him. Poof. Itaki disappears in a puff of smoke. Shadow clone? Since when? Dina turns towards Itaki, who is behind him. That earlier shadow clone was a distraction. I created two shadow clones and used earth style, hiding like a mole jutsu to sneak around. You fell for my trap and gave me an opportunity. I took advantage of this. Blurg. Dina throws up a mouthful of blood. You got me. Just kidding. Dina smirks and turns around. He coats his leg with carbon and kicks Itaki in the guts. Blurg. Itaki throws a mouthful of blood and shoots through multiple buildings. The black shine on Dina's leg fades and he cracks his neck. Haha. Ha. I like this feeling of despair. When they think they have won, but in the end, they just fell for my trap. Blurg. Some blood leaks from his wound. Dina looks at the wound. But first, let me deal with this injury. The skin around the wound turns a shade of dark black and covers the wound entirely. I was sure I coated my skin with hardened carbon to block the attack, but this kid's jutsu was able to penetrate my hardened carbon shell. He made me bleed and puke a mouthful of blood. I have to dismember him bit by bit and return the favor. Dina wipes the blood from his mouth and stares at Itaki. You won't go down this easily, right? I want to torture you more. Dina makes a blade using carbon control. He licks the blade and slowly walked towards Itaki. Let me pry open your body and take out all of your carbon. Swish. Dina disappears in a blur. Bam. He smashes the carbon blade near Itaka's head. Swish. Itaka quickly evades the attack and immediately makes some hand signs. Inside Aizuna's house, the cloaked figure enters inside a room and notices a sleeping Aiko. He sneakily walks towards her. The cloaked man raises a kunao and stabs towards her. Clank. Another kunao blocks the attack. The cloaked figure turns around to spot the defender. Not so fast. Akira blocks the kunao of the cloaked figure with his own. Aiko jumps back and makes some hand signs. Fire style, great fireball jutsu, a slash n. What can I do? I like this jutsu. Smiley face. Boom. The jutsu blows the roof, and it throws the cloaked man out of the house. My roof. I recently paid the remuneration fee for it. Now I have to repair it again. Aiko complains. Aiko, it isn't time for that. There is an enemy at our doorstep. We have to deal with him. Akira reminds Aiko. Yes, Aizuna's barrier warned us of the intruder. My Aizuna is such a genius. Aiko praises Aizuna. Both of them jump out of the house and face the cloaked man. Who are you? What's your motive behind this assassination attempt? Akira frowns and looks at the assassin. Boom. They hear a large explosion at one corner of the clan district. Boom. Another explosion startles them. Looks like our Uchiha clan is under attack. Whoever you are, you won't remain alive after this attempt. Akira infuses Chakra in his bracelet. A long blade appears in his hand. He infuses Chakra in the blade and engages the assassin. Aiko makes some hand signs, and her body vanishes in Sakura petals. Genjutsu Sherinan, 100 Blooming Sakura. Chapter 107, 105. Attack on Uchiha Part 5. A slash N, a double chapter as I promised. I want to showcase the abilities of other people besides Aizuna. That's the reason for his delay. Fire wind combo strike, strange mask exploding flame. Boom. The jutsu explodes on Shisui and engulf him. The attack creates a giant crater at the point of impact. Kakuza slowly walks towards the crater. I hope I haven't destroyed his body. I still need his head and heart to be intact, otherwise I won't get any bounty money from this hunt. Swoosh. A gigantic green hand comes out from the dust and punches Kakuzu. Kakuzu immediately crosses his hands to block his chest. Earth release, Earth spear. Kakuzu hardens his body to block the force of the attack. Bam. He is punched far by the attack. He breaks through multiple walls before being slammed into a wall. Blurg. Kakuzu coughs up a mouthful of blood and slowly stands up. His hands are smashed into a pulp and there is a giant dent on his chest. The threads inside his body slowly close the wounds and sew his hands to heal them to some extent. 
A giant green humanoid fiendish chakra construct with a giant red tomo on its chest appears in Kakuza's vision. Kakuza's eyes widen as he stutters. What? What is this? The Suzana stretches its arms. The giant tomo in the center of the chest glows. Chime Teki Senbon. The Suzano launches a barrage of Senbons at Kakuza. Earth style, earth wall. Kakuza makes some hand signs and creates a wall to block the attack. Boom, boom. The Senbon easily destroys the earth wall and continues to target Kakuzu. Looks like, I have no choice. Kakuzu extends his hand and pulls his mask creature to block the attack. Fire wind combo strike, strange mask exploding flame. The creature launches its most powerful attack to block the attack. The Senbons and the Jutsu cancels each other out. The barrage of Senbons continues and pierces the two creatures. Both of their hearts burst from the attack and the creatures lay dead on the ground. Huff. Shisui breathes heavily as he stares at Kakuzu. Blood trickles from his eyes. I have to end it soon. The chakra drain is quite huge. I need to train more. The Suzanu extends its hand. A giant Megatama appears in Suzana's hand. He aims Megatama at Kakuzu and yells. Yasaka Megatama. The green-colored Megatama spins rapidly and fires towards Kakuzu. Is this the end? I have fought against the first Hokage and escaped with my life. How could I lose to a young brat like him? The Megatama closes on Kakuzu and is about to slice him in half. Kakuzu closes his eyes in his final moments as the memories of his fight against first Hokage flashed in his mind. Typhoon release, consecutive bursting extreme winds. A giant storming vortex envelopes Kakuzu. The giant vortex blocks the Yasaka Megatama. It deflects the trajectory of Megatama and directs it towards sky. The Megatama reaches a height and burst into an explosion. A helper. Shisui frowns and looks at the newcomer. Another person in Akatsuki robe appears beside Kakuzu. The person helps Kakuzu to stand up. Fusion, what are you doing here? You were supposed to complete the mission. Kakuzu questions Fusion. I was nearby when I heard a large explosion followed by a large firestorm. Unable to hold my curiosity, I decided to check the clash. But man, I never expected to see you almost die on this mission. I saved your ass, just on time. Fusion explains to Kakuzu. You are hundred years too early to save me. Kakuzu slaps away Fusion's hand and saunters away. If you have enough time to banter, then focus on the enemy in front of you. He is quite powerful. His bingo book bounty didn't do justice to him. He must be at least 200 million ryo instead of a measly 50 million. I have to negotiate with those dealers. They are a bunch of misers. Kakuzu complains. Fushin silently stares at Kakuzu. You just escaped from a life-threatening situation and you are still talking about money. Tell me, how you plan to use all that money? You have no friends or family in this world. He questions Kakuzu. I just want to live my life luxuriously and die with lots of money in my hand. Kakuzu replies to Fushin. Luxuriously. Huh. The image of a young child appears in his mind. I also want Naoike to live happily. He stares at the giant humanoid chakra construct. Shisui looks at the pair of Akatsuki members chatting with each other. This is my chance. I have to end the fight when they are distracted. He creates a pair of katanas for his Suzano. The Suzano attacks the Akatsuki pair. Typhoon release, great consecutive bursting extreme winds. Swoosh. A gigantic tornado appears at Fushin's position. The size of the tornado easily dwarfs the Suzano. Shisui crosses his katanas to block the tornado. The intense pressure from the wind pushes him back. He had to hold a defensive stance to combat the tornado. Ha! Shisui infuses more chakra in his blades and dispels the tornado. The pair of Akatsuki members disappear from their position. Shisui dispels his Suzano and pants. I have used up lots of chakras in the previous fight. I won't be able to use any ninjutsu before I recover my chakra. Shisui pops a chakra pill in his mouth. The pill hastens his chakra recovery process. It will take a while for me to recover my chakra. I have to search for the invaders. They wouldn't have moved that far away. One of them is critically wounded, and the other one is low on chakra. I have to finish them off, they must pay for their deeds. Shisui uses his experience in Umbu to track the trails of Kakuzo and Fushin. Boom. The explosion engulfs Fugaku. The dust and debris clear out to reveal a perfectly fine Fugaku. A darkered ribcage made of chakra blocks the explosion. Fugaku slowly walks towards Sasori. The tomos in his sherry non revolves and takes the form of three dots, followed by three curves spiraling counterclockwise around the pupil. I didn't want to reveal it, but the situation forced my hand. I have to end it quickly. I don't want any elder to notice my Manjikyo Sherry non. It will further fuel their ambition. Fugaku looks towards Sasori and mutter. Amaterasu. Blood trickles down from Fugaku's right eye. Black flames start to form at the focal point of his vision. Sasori immediately senses the danger. He immediately weaves his chakra threads and manipulates the Kaze cage puppet. The puppet opens its mouth and releases an extensive amount of iron sand. The sand floats in front of Sasori and blocks the Amaterasu. The iron sand burns from the flames. What kind of flames are these? I have to avoid contact with them at all costs. Sasori cautiously stares at the burning iron sand. He manipulates the Kaze cage puppet. The burning iron sand separates from the rest of the iron sand and falls on the ground. Immediately after, the ground catches fire and burns. These flames are so dangerous. I have to shield myself with the iron sand. The iron sand forms a dome around Sasori. His chakra threads continue to manipulate the puppet. 
Magnet release, iron sand drizzle. The iron sand around the puppet turns into many minuscule bullets. The puppet raises its arm and points towards Fugaku. Swish, swish, swish. The bullets move at an extremely fast speed towards Fugaku. They bombard the chucker ribs. Crack, crack. Some cracks appear on the rib cages. Parts of the rib cage start to shatter as it gets chipped away. So, it is not an absolute defense after all. If I can chip away this jutsu, then he will be vulnerable. The puppet raises its another hand. The bullets turn into sharp needles and bombard the Suzanu. Fugaku frowns as his Suzanu ribs get chipped away. I have underestimated his puppet. Looks like I have to raise my defense. Fugaku infuses more chakra into the Suzanu. Suzanu evolves to the next stage. Two chakra arm grows out from the ribs and the ribs increases in size. It restores the ribs to normal. The continuous barrage of iron bullets and needles does not affect them. Interesting? This is quite a wonderful ability. Now, I want to turn you into a puppet even more. With you and the third Kaze cage in my collection, I will get the ultimate defense and the ultimate offense. The Kaze cage puppet clasps its hands. Magnet release, iron sand gathering assault. A great volume of iron sand gathers in front of the puppet. The iron sand compresses into high density and increases the hardness of the sand. The iron sand shapes into a giant axe and scythe. The puppet directs the axe and the scythe. Swoosh. The giant axe spins rapidly and cleaves towards Fugaku. The Suzano raises its arms and catches the axe between its palm. The scythe moves horizontally and slashes the ribs of Suzano. Clank. The Suzano blocks the first hit of the scythe. Let me see how long can your defense last under my relentless strikes. Sassari waves his hand. The axe and the scythe float back and attack again. Chapter 108, 106. Attack on Uchiha Part 6. A slash N, if you don't like the story don't read it. But please stop sending annoying DMS on Discord. I will write it the way I want it. As I mentioned earlier, the story is slow paced and whenever any chapter has only information I will post an extra chapter at that time. As for the duration of the teleportation, there are various fights happening in background. We have Itaka vs Dino, Shisui vs Kakuzo and Fushin, Fugaku vs Sasori. Uchiha clan is an elite clan. Do you really want to see the entire story get carried by MC where other characters are mere fodders for plot? If yes, then I can only tell you to drop it. The story has character development for relevant characters explaining their power-ups. It's not like I will just suddenly make them stronger. Also, current Itaki is weaker than canon because he don't have the huge power boost from MS. Sorry for the rant but I wanted to get it off my chest. Those annoying DMS are making me salty. Inside Umbu headquarters. One of the Umbu members notices the signal and he immediately alerts other members. There is an emergency. We have received a signal for backup near Uchiha quarters. But Uchiha police force is in charge of that area another Umbu member remarks. There is no time to lose, we can sort the situation later. For now let's head to Uchiha quarters. One of the higher ups of Dragon Unit orders. Yes, sir. The Umbu immediately prepares their equipment and flicker towards Uchiha district. They arrive outside Uchiha quarters and notices the condition of Uchiha clan. Seems like, Uchiha clan is under attack. We have to deal with the attacker. Let's go. The leader signals the rest of the members. They dash towards the Uchiha clan entrance. Swirl. Suddenly, a swirling portal opens in front of Uchiha district entrance. The Umbu members stop their charge and cautiously look at the intruder. The intruder wears an orange mask with black flame patterns over it. Who are you? What's your motive for trespassing the village? If you don't answer within the next three seconds, then we will consider you hostile. The masked man silently stares at the Umbu members. None of you are allowed to interfere or else get ready to lose your life here. He remarks. Time's up. The Umbu member dashes towards the masked man. He throws a kunao towards the masked man and appears beside him. The kunao phases through the masked man's body. The masked man wields a kuzari with gunbei attached to its end. The other end of the kuzari is connected to the kama. He swings the kama and beheads the umbu member. When I said, no interference is allowed in this massacre, then I meant it. Attack him. He is a hostile intruder. Capture him or just kill him. The umbu members immediately attack the masked man. All of them throw multiple kunaos towards the masked man. The kunaos phases through the masked man. Looks like all of you will learn this hard way. The masked man blocks an attack with his kuzari. He twists the kuzari and kicks the umbu and sent him flying away. Lightning release, spinning lightning shot. One of the umbu fires a spinning compressed lightning ball at the masked man. The ball moves like a drill while spinning continuously. The masked man blocks the attack with his gunbei. He points the gunbei towards a nearby umbu member. Uchiha return. Fwoosh. The gunbei turns the lightning chakra in wind chakra and reflects it instantaneously. Bang. The reflected wind chakra blows the head of a nearby umbu member. Don't attack him directly. He can somehow nullify our attack and use them against us. Bind him in a place and attack him. Capture him alive if possible, we need to interrogate him. If not, just finish him off. The leader commands the rest of Umbu members. Four Umbu surround the masked man. All of them make some hand signs and slam their hand on the ground. Lightning release, four pillar bind. They summon four giant rock pillars around the masked man. Release. The Umbu's clasps their hand. The rock pillar releases a discharge of lightning and surrounds Obito with a bolt of lightning. Crackle, crackle. 
The lightning crackles from the rock pillars and shoots a bolt of lightning towards the masked man. The masked man raises his right hand. Small chakra flames erupt on tip of his fingers. He then slams his palm on the ground. Secret technique, Achiha flame formation. A cylindrical flame barrier erupts from his position. The flame barrier pushes away the lightning bind and incinerates the four Umbu members to ashes. Swoosh. The masked man enters inside the ground and appears behind the leader of the Umbu team. Swish. The leader turns his head around to face the masked man with a surprised expression. Who are? Blood trickles from his throat and the leader's head fall on the ground. Enough fooling around. Time to finish it up. Swish, swish. The masked man disappears and reappears in front of the Uchiha clan's entrance. The head of the remaining Umbu members rolls down and all of them lifelessly fall on the ground. The masked man looks towards the Uchiha clan. I was never acknowledged by anyone in this clan. Swoosh. Izuna appears on top of his house. He looks at the broken roof and then turns towards the fight. Akira and Aiko are fighting against a cloaked man. Izuna tries to sense the chakra of the masked man, but his senses get blocked. Hmm. There seems to be some strange seal on this guy's mask. This seal is blocking my senses. Izuna frowns. He carefully inspects the cloaked man. His parents are equally matched with the cloaked man. They will be fine for now, but who could be this masked man? He doesn't look like Obito. Obito won't dare to directly attack my family. Boom. Izuna's attention is drawn by an explosion. He turns towards the explosion and notices Itake flying out from the explosion. Swoosh. Izuna flickers and appears beside Itake. He kills the momentum of Itake and prevents him from slamming into a wall. Itake turns around and notices Izuna. Izuna's body is covered in a cyan-colored cloak with many strange markings on the cloak. Chakra flickers from his cloak. There is a large tomo on his back and front. Itake's eyes widen and he questions Izuna. This, what is this technique, Izuna Nyizen? He points at the cyan cloak. I will explain it later, for now, let me deal with the intruder. Izuna looks towards Dina. He notices the Akatsuki cloak on Dina body. Akatsuki. What are the members of Akatsuki doing here? He turns towards Itake for answers. Izuna Nyizen? The Akatsuki members infiltrated the village without alerting the barrier corp. Then they started a massacre of our clan members. Grandma Hatsumai. Itake clenches his fist. This Akatsuki member brutally killed her. I am still too weak, big brother Izuna. Tears drip from Itake's eyes. The tomos in his eyes spin rapidly. The tomos fuses to create three spiraling curves around the pupil. Blood trickles from his eyes. Oh, that's quite a heart-touching reunion here. A raspy voice mocks them. Dina slowly walks in front of Itake and Izuna. That old hag had no flavor. Her carbon dating was too old, I guess. Haha. <laughs> Dina starts to laugh maniacally. That was too hilarious. I can't control myself from laughing. Haha. <laughs> Anger boils within Izuna's heart. So, it still came down to this. I eliminated the tumor Danzo but they still came after my clan. You, you were the one who trespassed our clan territory and killed Grandma Hatsumai. Izuna looks at Dino with rage. Dino grins and looks at Izuna with a confident smile. Yes, it was me. I was the one who slowly tortured and killed that old hag. Swoosh bang. Izuna disappears and reappears in front of Dina. He punches Dina in guts. The force from the attack creates a large crater on the ground. Dina breaks through multiple walls and slams into the outer walls of clan district. Blurg. He pukes out a mouthful of blood. Careful, Nyizen. This guy can manipulate carbon and shape into various weapons and even a shield to block any attacks. He can also harden his body to block physical attacks. Itaki warns Izuna. Thanks for your warning, Itaki. But there is no need to worry. Check on Izumi. She must be traumatized from the incident. I will deal with this guy. Itaki nods his head and flickers in the direction of his house. Earlier, his shadow clone brought Izumi to his house. Izuna looks towards Dino and murmurs. Carbon control, huh. If I remembered correctly, there was such a guy in Baruto. But his abilities to control carbon were way beyond this man. I wonder if there is a connection between them. Since he dared to harm my family and friends. He better be ready to pay the price. Swoosh. Izuna appears in front of Dino. Dino slowly falls from the wall. The entire chest area of Dino is coated in a black layer. Tui. Dino slowly stands up and spits blood. That was a nice punch. It even managed to harm my hardened body. You took me by surprise, but it won't happen again. Outside the Uchiha clan. Black Zetsu pops out from the ground in front of Obito. He is back. Izuna Uchiha has returned to the clan. Obito nods to Black Zetsu. It's time to retreat. We can't fight against that monster without other members of Akatsuki. Let's retreat for now. Signal other members to retreat immediately. I don't want any causalities among them. It will delay our Eye of the Moon plan. Very well, I will inform them quickly. I have marked them with my spore technique. I can sense their presence. White Zetsu chimes in. Swirl. Obito disappears in a swirling portal. Zetsu enters the ground and moves towards the Akatsuki members. Chapter 109, 107. Crisis in Uchiha Clan. A slash N. I never had any plan to write a short novel. Part of the reason there are so many details and extra chapters in the novel. By the end of this novel, there will be around 200,300 of my original Jutsu and around 2,530 new Kekiai Jenkai. So, yeah the progress will be slow. Bam, bam. 
The axe and scythe relentlessly strike on Suzanu. Crack, crack. Some crack appears on Fugaku Suzanu. Enough with the playtime. It's time to end it. Fugaku infuses more chakra in his Suzanu. The Suzanu takes the form of a humanoid with four arms. Two of the arms grab hold of the axe and the remaining two grabs the scythe. Fugaku focuses his vision on a gap in Sasori's defense. Amaterasu. Black flames engulf Sasori's cloak. He got me. Sasori immediately throws away his robe and jumps back. Wham. Fugaku appears on top of Sasori with his Suzano. The Suzano punches Sasori. Sasori flicks his fingers and the Kaze cage puppet creates an iron shield to block the punch. The force of the punch sent him flying. Fugaku immediately makes some hand signs. Fire style, great fireball technique. By using the Suzano as a medium, Fugaku unleashes a barrage of giant fireballs from the construct's mouth. Magnet release, iron sand repulsion. The Kaze cage puppet creates two spheres of iron sand and charges them with a similar magnetic charge. This results in a large repulsive magnetic field. The repulsive force pushes back the fireball and scatters iron sand. Sasori escapes from the assault of Fugaku and warily looks at the Suzanu. Swoosh. Zetsu pops out from the ground. Swish. Sasori immediately places a kunao on Zetsu's neck. Hold on. White Zetsu shouts frantically. Sasori removes the kunao and questions Zetsu. What's the matter? Why are you interrupting my fight? Black Zetsu stares at Fugaku Suzano for a while before he replies to Sasori. It's time to return. This mission is a failure, the Shinigami has returned to the village. We can't fight against the combined forces of so many powerful ninjas. The rest of the villagers have been alerted by this attack. Soon, the enemies will surround us. Sasori nods to Zetsu and retreats. Zetsu enters the ground again to inform Kakuzo and Fushin. Fugaku watches Sasori run away from the village. Fugaku dispels his Suzanu. He coughs up blood and falls on the ground. Fugaku. Yagamai appears beside Fugaku and helps him get up. Yagamai notices a purple tint on Fugaku's body. You have been poisoned, Fugaku. You need immediate medical attention, I will take you to the Leaf Village Hospital. Yagamai carries Fugaku on his shoulder. Zetsu informs Kakuzu and Fushin to retreat. Both of them comply and retreat to the edge of the village. Kakuzu searches his holster. Fushin looks at him with a frown. What's the matter, Kakuzu? What are you searching for? Kakuzu ignores Fushin and continues to search. After a while, he fishes out a scroll from his pocket. Finally, found it. Kakuzu infuses some of his chakras in the scroll. A stack of notes appears in his hand. Fushin silently stares at Kakuzu with a loss for words. You just escaped from the enemy with your dear life and the first thing that matters to you is money. I don't get how your brain functions. Shut the fuck up. Even though you are Sasori's partner, that doesn't mean I won't kill you. Don't badmouth my money. Kakuzu threatens Fushin. Okay, okay man, I got it. Fushin tries to calm Kakuzu. Kakuzu continues to count the stack of money. Not even a penny less. I have made a profit in this hall. But sadly, I lost four of my hearts. That bastard, someday I will make him pay with his life. Kakuzu stows away the money. Zetsu pops out from the ground outside Kanaha. Why we are at our meeting point. Dino is still inside the village. White Zetsu questions Black Zetsu's intention. He won't live long. He had provoked the Shinigami. He is dead. Forget about him. Black Zetsu replies calmly. This Shinigami could have been a better pawn than Obito. Alas. He was born too late and it would be quite hard to coax him. Black Zetsu sighs silently. Tui. Dino spits blood and slowly stands up. Haha. It has been a while since I felt this pain. You will pay for your insolence. Cuckoo. Dino forms a blade and a shield from carbon. He licks the blood from his blade and dashes towards Izuna. You talk too much. Swoosh. Izuna disappears and reappears in front of Dino. Bam. He punches the black diamond shield of Dino. Dino has a smile on his face as he expects the look of disbelief on Izuna's face. Crack, crack. The black diamond shield shatters into fragments. Wham. Izuna punches Dino into the face. He slams into another wall. Ah, it hurts, you bastard. A frantic scream escapes from Dino. Izuna slowly walks in front of Dino. You have signed a death contract with Reaper, the instance you attacked my family and clan. I will slowly torture and kill you to make you feel their pain. Blue flames appear in Izuna's hand. Arctic release, Annihilation Zero. The blue flames engulf Dino and slowly consume his body. Ah, ah. Dino screams in pain as the icy flames crawls through his body, slowly freezing his blood and organs and rupturing and shattering them one by one. Ah, ah, ah. ah. Dino's screams of Ajayani resounds through the entire Uchiha clan. I hope these screams will calm the vengeful souls of people brutally murdered by him. Ah, what are these flames? Dino's body is slowly frozen at places where the fire touches his body. He feels a mixed sensation of burning and freezing. Dino frantically releases carbon from his body to prevent the fire. The carbon freezes and shatters into dust. No, this can't be. The flames freeze Dino's entire body. Crack, crack. Various cracks appear on his Dino's frozen statue. Clatter. Dino shatters into countless pieces. The flames fall on the ground and freeze the nearby area. The area around them turns into an ice hell. It's time to end that masked guy. Izuna speaks in icy cold tone. He flickers towards his parents. The masked man notices him. Kuku, so, the playtime is over. 
Those Akatsuki fellows were useless. I have to do it myself. The masked man jumps back and makes some hand signs and slams his palms on the ground. Secret technique, summoning demonic quintuple rashomon. Five giant gates erupt from the ground. The gates have a frightening demonic face upon them. The gate's doors shuts tightly, acting as a solid wall. Seal. He clasps his hand. The gates tightly shut and more solid walls appear in the gaps. The eyes of the demonic faces glow with green color. A giant pentagonal green barrier forms at the position of gates. Now, none of you will be able to escape. Haha. <laughs> the masked man laughs. It's time for my revenge. Hiruzen, Sakamo, and various other elders and Umbu unit arrive outside the Uchiha district. They notice the giant barrier erected in the center of the Uchiha district. Hiruzen frowns. Looks like the Uchiha district is under attack. Or it can be an act by Uchiha clan, they are preparing for a coup d'etat against the village after all. Homura remarks. Let's check it out. Hiruzen signals an Umbu unit. The Umbu quickly reaches near the barrier. One of the Umbu members coats his blade in wind chakra and slashes at the barrier. Slash. There is no damage to the barrier. The blade catches fire, the Umbu member immediately throws away the blade. Huh? There is a strong sealing technique on this barrier. It can't be destroyed from the outside. We can only destroy it from inside. Hiruzen analyzes the barrier. He frowns and thinks of a solution. Sensor unit, sensor unit. Hiruzen shouts. A group of special Jounins arrives and bows before him. Yes, Hokage-sama. Form a sensing technique barrier around this place and report the situation of the barrier to me. I want to know what's happening inside this barrier. Hiruzen orders them. Yes, Hokage-sama. The sensor corp forms some hand signs and sits in a formation. They stretch out their hand in front of them. Sensing water sphere. A spherical mass of water takes shape in front of them. Some bubbles rise from the barrier and there are ripples here and there on the surface of the sphere. The sensor corp reports to Hiruzen. Hokage-sama, these bubbles are the chakra signature of the people inside the barrier. The ripples indicate the usage of various jutsu inside the barrier. The leader of the corp explains. Then what about these two large bubbles? Hiruzen points at two large water bubbles. The leader looks closely at the bubbles before he replies. Hokage-sama, these two are also chakra signature of people inside the barrier, and from the look of it, their chakra reserves are far greater than average. Hiruzen scrutinizes the sensing sphere before he inquires. How high are their chakra reserves compared to a cage? The leader hesitates for a while before he replies. If I compare their chakra reserves to yours Hokage-sama, then they have at least 50 times more chakra than you. And that's an estimate on my part. The eyes of nearby elders widen as they stare at the sensing sphere. What's going inside the barrier? Are there Jinchurikis fighting inside the barrier? Koharu remarks. Hiruzen immediately summons Kakashi. Inu, check on Naruto Azumaki. You will find him in Senju compounds. Yes, Hokage-sama. Kakashi flickers away. Hiruzen makes some hand signs and slams his palm on the ground. Summoning Jetsu, Monkey King Inma. Inma appears beside Hiruzen and questions him. What's the matter, Hiruzen? Hiruzen points towards the barrier. Inma, can you try to break this barrier in your adamantine form? Let me give it a try. Inma transforms into an adamantine staff. Hiruzen wields the staff and dash towards the barrier. Chapter 110, 108. The Indestructible Barrier. Bam. Hiruzen slams the adamantine staff on the barrier. The barrier shakes a little from the force of the attack. Swoosh. The recoil force of the barrier pushes him back. Arg. The adamantine staff transform back into Monkey King Inma. He grimaces in pain and rubs his fur. This barrier is very powerful. It is almost impossible to break it from outside unless you apply enough force to overcome the repulsive force of the ceiling formula. Inma remarks. It is an advanced version of summoning, quintuple rashomon used by first Hokage Hashirama Senju. Hiruzen the enemy is quite powerful this time around. Hiruzen nods to Inma and remarks, That Uchiha boy, I told you about is inside the barrier. I hope he will be able to search for a way to deal with this barrier. So, that's how it is. Then I will be going, Hiruzen. You should also take care of your old bones. Inma disappears in a poof of white smoke. Hum. Hiruzen nods and stares at the barrier. I hope everything will turn fine. Kanaha has already weakened a lot in this past decade. Inside the barrier. Aizuna stares at the barrier. He raises his eyebrows as he inspects the barrier. This is quite a high level, Fuinjutsu barrier. If I remember correctly, it is the advanced version of summoning, Quintuple Rashomon. It requires a large amount of chakra to cast this barrier. It has a formidable defense that can equally distribute the force of an attack around the entire barrier. Aizuna activates his Sherinan and studies the barrier. He scans multiple Fuinjutsu seals on the Rashomon gates. The barrier has two defense layers. The first defense layer is the green energy barrier and the second layer is the dark iron demonic Rashomon gates. Unless you destroy the inner Rashomon gates, the barrier will continuously regenerate the outer energy layer by sucking the chakra and the life force of the trapped people. This makes this barrier self-sustaining. That means, there is no need for the caster to maintain the barrier, quite a sinister barrier indeed. But it has a fatal weakness, if it concentrates the force of the attack at a point, then I can destroy the Rashomon gates before they regenerate. Aizuna concludes the weakness of the barrier. I can destroy this barrier in two hits if I go full power. Otherwise, it will take five or six hits to destroy this barrier. 
Aizuna turns towards the masked man. But I guess he won't give me the time. Let's deal with him first. Swoosh. Aizuna appears beside Akira and Aiko. He confronts the masked man. Mom and dad, leave him to me. I will deal with him. Akira retreats. Aiko hesitates for a while, but she retreats nonetheless. Aizuna dear, he is very strong. Take care while fighting him. She warns him. I will keep that in mind. Aizuna nods to Aiko and turns towards the masked man. The masked man releases his hands and makes some more hand signs. Who are you? Aizuna questions him. Wind release, extreme wind bullet barrage. The masked man sucks an extensive amount of air and fires multiple wind bullets at Aizuna. Aizuna twists his body in the air and easily dodges the bullets. The wind bullets punch multiple holes through nearby houses and blow them away. The power of this rank jutsu is enhanced to an rank jutsu. I have never met with such a strong wind user before. Who is he exactly? Aizuna frowns. Lightning release, Kaminari's Wraith. The masked man fires multiple concentrated bolts of lightning at Aizuna. The bolts travel extremely fast towards Aizuna and surround him. Crackle, crackle. The ground cracks from the lightning blast. Aizuna raises his right hand and coats it in the wind chakra. Dark release, chakra absorption. Two dark red overlapping diamond marks appear on his right palm. Aizuna absorbs the lightning jutsu through the mark. He directs the palm towards the masked man. Dark release, judgment. He fires the lightning jutsu back towards the masked man. TCH. The masked man clicks his tongue and makes some more hand signs. Funjutsu, comma barrier. A green barrier appears in front of him and blocks the lightning bolt. He immediately jumps back and avoids the attack from Aizuna. Boom. An enormous crater appears at the previous position of the masked man. A spiraling thunderstorm engulfs the entire crater. The thunderstorm comes down after a while, and purple lightning flickers through the crater. He dodged my vanishing purple lightning rays non. Aizuna warily glances at the masked man. Aizuna Uchiha, today will be your last day. After I kill you, I will kill your entire family and send them to the afterlife with you. A raspy voice greets Aizuna. Let's see, if you have the power to make that possible. Swift release, sonic steps. Aizuna disappears and immediately appears in front of the masked man. He clenches his fist and infuses a large amount of chakra in them. Power release, destruction fist. His fist glows with an orange color and smashes into the masked man. Bam. The punch pushes the masked man a little. The masked man regains his balance and delivers a punch of his own. The masked man's fist glows with white light. Bam. Aizuna crosses his arms in front of his chest. Metal release, adamantine skin. He blocks the punch, but the force flung him away. Aizuna somersaults in the air and regains his balance. He quickly makes some hand signs and concentrates a large amount of chakra in his palms. Radiation release, nuclear devastation. He fires a condensed green orb of chakra towards the masked man. The orb quickly closes on the masked man. Release. Aizuna claps his hand. The orb expands immediately and detonates on top of the masked man. This can be a little bad. The masked man forms a multi-layered green barrier to protect himself. Boom. An enormous explosion engulfs him. The explosion rises into a large pillar of green light and slowly vanishes into the air. A massive gap appears on top of the barrier. Outside the barrier, Hiruzen and the rest of the elders stare at the explosion with wide eyes. A gigantic ripple travels across the sensing sphere and the water of the sphere boils. Sweat glides down the forehead of the sensor corp members. They immediately infuse chakra in the sphere to stabilize the barrier. The barrier stabilizes and stops boiling, but the ripples continue to fluctuate on the barrier. The leader of the corp wipe his forehead and report to Hiruzen. Hokage-sama, this explosion is very potent. It has enough power to obliterate Onet herd of Konoha. The leader gulps his saliva as he imagines the effect of Jutsu on the village. Hiruzen continues to stare at the explosion as he mutters. What kind of fight is happening inside the barrier? Such powerful ninjutsu. It is at the level of a forbidden technique. Quickly the earlier explosion opened a hole in the barrier. We have to immediately breach the barrier and inspect the situation inside the barrier. One of the dragon unit members notices the large hole in the green barrier. Multiple umbus jumps towards the hole and tries to enter inside the barrier. Swa. The demonic eyes on the gates lit up. They immediately fire a green beam at the breach. The barrier starts to repair itself. Quick. Enter inside before it repairs. The umbu members increase their speed. Fwoosh. The barrier closes and many umbu members slams into the barrier. Ah. Their body catches fire and turns into ashes. The rest of the umbu member stops their track and jumps back. The regeneration rate of this barrier is ridiculous. It requires a large amount of chakra to sustain this barrier. The leader of the barrier corp scrutinizes the barrier. Oh, you are finally here, Kakoi. Can you find a weakness of this barrier? Hiruzen greets the newcomer. The newcomer wears a Shinto priest robe. He has shoulder-length brown hair and unique marking under his eyes. He wears a pointed hat with the barrier team symbol above his forehead protector. Kakoi bows before Hiruzen. I will try my best, Hokage-sama. Good. Hiruzen nods to Kakoi and turns towards the barrier. Kakoi instructs other members of the barrier team to aid the sensor corp. Inside the barrier, the dust and debris from the explosion settle down. The masked man walks out of the crater. His body has scorch marks and there are multiple third-degree burns on his body. The blast destroys the green barriers around his body. Parts of the barrier flickers for a while before they dissipate. 
There is a strange purple symbol on the masked man's chest. The masked man makes some strange hand signs and taps the symbol on his chest. A white glow coats the masked man's body. His wounds and burns regenerate quickly. The white glow heals the wounds at a rapid rate. Aizuna activates his Manjikyo Sherinan and closely inspect the white glow. This is, this is light chakra. But how? Aizuna's eye widens in surprise. Chapter 111, 109. The entry of the sunin. BZZZT, wish. The masked man's wounds heal rapidly. He cracks his neck and clenches his fist. Ah, this sensation. I really like this new body. Now, now it's time to have my revenge. Aizuna inspects the entire process through his evolved eternal Manjikyo Sherinan. That's, that's the light chakra. How, how could he use this chakra? Lots of questions and doubts appear in Aizuna's mind. Guess I have to beat him up to know my answers. Swift release, sonic steps. He swiftly appears in front of the masked man and draws out his blade and infuses dark chakra. Silver black flames cover the blade and slash it towards the masked man. Kanjutsu, Uchiha style, dance of the sun halo. With a quick gesture of his hand, Aizuna slashes his sword multiple times. He unleashes a multitude of sword strikes together with waves of silver black flames at the masked man. Water release, great waterfall technique. Splash. The masked man makes some hands and expels a large volume of water in the shape of a vortex. The vortex devastates everything in its way and collides with the flame waves. The flames die down as Aizuna slashes at the masked man. Clank. The masked man blocks the sword with a kunao. Aizuna jumps back and avoids a slash from the masked man. Swish. He deflects multiple kunaos with his sword. Aizuna frowns as he stares at the masked man. Who is he? I have never met anyone this strong before. He can go toe-a-toe with me at my own at herd power, and I feel like he is still holding back a little. Also, what's the deal with that strange Funjutsu seal? It reminds me of the seal I saw on one of those old scrolls in Mount Mayaboko. Whoosh, whoosh. Aizuna dodges two large Fuma shurikens and turns his attention to the masked man. Aizuna makes some hand signs and stomps his feet on the ground. Shock release, seismic seizure. A mini earthquake shakes the ground and the Rashomon barrier tremble from the shock. The ground beneath the masked man tore apart. The masked man jumps in the air and takes a foothold on one of the Rashomon gate. Wind style, vacuum wave blast. The masked man takes a deep breath and fires a wide area wind jutsu. The wind current rotates horizontally and crushes everything in its way. I have played enough. Time to end this farce. Aizuna claps his hand. He absorbs a large amount of nature energy and enters sage mode. A cyan chakra cloaks his body. The cloak has a giant tomo on its front and back. Sage art, storm release, fang of light. Aizuna fires a sharp, thin stream of light from his mouth. Flash. The beam travels at almost light speed. It easily cleaves through the wind vortex and splits the masked man in half. Crack, crack. The mask splits in half and falls apart to reveal the face of the masked man. This, this can't be. How, how is this possible? Aizuna's eye widens in surprise. He points his finger and question. How can it be you? Impossible. Cuckoo. It is indeed me. Are you surprised? Haha. Ha. Inside Shikotsu Forest. Sunade slowly opens her eyes. There are black markings around and under her eyes. The strength of a hundred seal overlaps with the markings and forms a diamond marking on her forehead. Sunade jumps from the giant tree and crashes to the ground. She brushes off the dust and jumps in the air. Sunade clenches her fist and infuses large amounts of nature energy in her fist. Ha! Her fist glows with cyan chakra as she smashes it in a nearby hill. Bam! Rumble, rumble. The hill quakes and split apart. Almost half of the hill crumble from the attack and the nearby terrain changes. Dust and debris settle to reveal a narrow valley between the two sides of the hill. Sunade looks at the valley with wide eyes. Amazing, Sunade sama Katsuyu slithers over to Tsunade. Congratulations, Sunade sama you have finally mastered the sage mode. It took you close to nine months to learn the sage mode. But you have mastered the perfect sage mode. Katsuyu applauds Tsunade. Katsuyu, I never thought sage mode would be this powerful. It has almost increased my physical strength by tenfold or even more. I can even feel the dead cells of my body getting rejuvenating from the nature energy. Sunade points to her skin as it turns glossy. Now, I can maintain my beauty for as long as I want. Sunade inspects her body closely. Ah, uh, uh hum. Sunade sama it would be better if you focus more on your nature energy control. You will be able to enter sage mode for much longer. Sunade stops and complains. You are such a grouch Katsuyo. I am only looking at the effects of sage mode on my body. I have to be aware of all side effects of sage mode to completely master it. Katsuyu sweat drops and her tentacles shake in frenzy. Ah. Suddenly, Katsuya's optical tentacles rise sharply as she freaks out. Her expression turns grim, and she turns towards Tsunade. Tsunade sama there is an emergency Tsunade sama The village is under attack, Tsunade sama The Uchiha clan, the Uchiha clan is. What? Tsunade immediately turns to Katsuyu and question her. What happened? Tell everything in detail. I want every piece of information. Yes, Tsunade sama Shizun just summoned a smaller clone of mine and reported the condition of the village. Through my clone, I saw the entire Uchiha clan shrouded in a giant barrier. The village is troubled and is unable to breach the barrier. Even Hokage-sama failed in his attempt. Katsuyu explains everything to Tsunade. What, such a thing happened in the village? 
I have to return to the village immediately. Katsuyu let's go. Tsunade's expression turns serious. Yes, Tsunade sama Tsunade jumps on top of Katsuyu and makes some hand signs and slams her hands. Fwoosh. Both of them disappear in a puff of smoke and appear inside Kanaha. The summoning smoke clear out and Tsunade looks around. She spots the giant green barrier and notices the squad of Umbu and other ninja surrounding it. Hiruzen raises his head and turns towards Tsunade. Tsunade walks towards Hiruzen and questions him. Sensei, what's the matter? What is this all about? Can you explain everything in detail? Very well, Hiruzen sighs and explains everything to Tsunade. This barrier is almost unbreachable. All of our attempts to destroy this barrier went vain. Hiruzen rubs his forehead. Hokage-sama. Shikaku flickers in front of Hiruzen and greets him. Oh, Shikaku. Finally, you are here. I need you to take a look at the situation and figure out a feasible solution. Hiruzen requests Shikaku. Hmm. Shikaku surveys the barrier. Inoichi, can you tell me the exact number of people trapped inside this barrier? I want a rough estimate. He turns towards Inoichi. Let me give it a shot. Inoichi walks towards the sensor corp. He places one of his hands near the sensing sphere and the other hand on his forehead. Inoichi closes his eyes to sense the chakra fluctuation. Mind-body sense extension jutsu. Inoichi extends his senses inside the barrier and surveys inside for a while. After a few minutes, he opens his eyes and turns towards Hiruzen. Inoichi gulps his saliva and report. There is bad news, Hokage-sama. Hiruzen's expression turns grave, but he still nods to Inoichi to continue. The Uchiha clan, the Uchiha clan. Almost half of the members of the Uchiha clan have lost their life. I can't sense their chakra anymore and also, Inoichi takes a deep breath before he continues. Also, this barrier is draining the chakra of the rest of the members. If we don't destroy it immediately, then we will lose the Uchiha clan. Inoichi drops a bombshell. What? Tsunade shouts in disbelief. Yes, Tsunade sama Inoichi nods in affirmation. No, we have to break this barrier. I can't allow this. Memories of the past few years spent with Aizuna and his family flashes in her mind. In these past few years, she had considered Aizuna as a family, and the love she received from his family has slowly closed the gap in her heart. Tsune jumps on top of Katsuyu and claps her hand. She closes her eye and meditates. Hiruzen questions Katsuyu. Katsuyu, what's going on? What is Tsune trying to do? Hokage-sama, Tsune sama is a sage now. She will be able to do something about this barrier. Katsuyu replies to Hiruzen. What? It is Hiruzen's turn to get surprised. You mean, she had mastered the same sage mode as Hashirama-sensei. But that, that's impossible, right? Even Tsunade's father wasn't able to master the sage mode, then how could Tsunade learn it? Hiruzen has disbelief written over his face. Tsunade sama is such a genius. She modified the technique of Mito-sama and now she learned the same sage mode as Hashirama-sama. Katsuyu praises Tsunade. After a while, Tsunade opens her eyes and jumps in front of the barrier. Yosha. Tsunade bumps her fists and infuses chakra into them. Hiruzen stares at Tsunade with wide eyes as the figure of the first Hokage flashes in his mind. Are you looking at her, sensei? Your tsuna has already surpassed me. Tear drip from his eyes. Hiruzen quickly wipes his tear and looks towards the Hokage monument. Creator's Thoughts. Chapter 112, 110. The mastermind behind the attack. Da, da. Danzo, it's you? How could it be you? How are you still alive? Aizuna questions in frenzy. Aizuna recalls his memories of when he killed Danzo. I sealed him inside the Shinigami's stomach and I destroyed his body. How he is still alive? I am sure he even used his last Izanagi in the fight. Aizuna calms down his emotions and scrutinizes Danzo's body with his Manjikyo Sherinan. He activates his Eye of Insight and checks the changes in Danzo's body. Throb. Throb. The strange Funjutsu seal located in Danzo's chest is pumping out an enormous amount of chakra in his body. Aizuna can see the nature energy rapidly getting converted into chakra. Is it because of this seal? Is this the reason Danzo is still alive? No, there seems to be more to it. The Sin seal on his hand heats up. The grimoire pops out from its separate space and shows its hostility to the seal. Aizuna frowns from the strange reaction of Sin Seal. I have an iota of the idea. Who did it? But to be on the safe side, I will kill Danzo again and will investigate this matter later. Danzo's body regenerates and joins again. Haha. <laughs> Surprised? Aren't you? Seeing me alive and stronger than ever. Huh? You killed me and sealed my soul inside the Reaper. I suffered inside that dark place for who knows how much time? My soul was suffering from endless pain and agony. There wasn't a single moment when I wasn't tormented. In that darkness, a hand stretched out to me, the hand of a demon. I sold my soul to the demon and made a contract with him. He gave me this new body and this power. I am stronger than ever. Even first Hokage Hashirama Senju isn't a match for me now. You are nothing but a measly worm whom I will kill easily with a snap of my finger. I am immortal at this point. As long as my soul is fine, I won't die no matter how many times you kill this body. Haha. <laughs> Danzo laughs maniacally and makes some hand signs. Funjutsu, devouring demon chains. He slams his hands on the ground and various dark black chains erupt from the ground from a purple colored portal and chase Aizuna. Clank, clank. Aizuna deflects the chain, but they continue to chase after him like a homing missile. TCH. These chains are so annoying. 
Every time I contact them, they suck my chakra and vitality. Aizuna clicks his tongue and looks at the chains in annoyance. Let me try to freeze these chains. He jumps back and makes some hand signs. Ice release, snow dragon blizzard. Aizuna launches a giant dragon of ice towards the chains. The dragon attacks the chains and freezes them. Danzo clasps his hand and infuses more chakra. Rattle, rattle. The chains rattle and break free from the constraints of ice. Looks like ice will work, but I have to use a stronger jutsu. Let me put that new Kekai Toda to test. Aizuna stops in his chase and confronts the chains. He claps his hands and infuses ice release and fire release chakra in his left and right hand. Arctic release, freezing flames of nothingness. He releases large amounts of blue flames from his hands. Sizzle, sizzle. Shum. The flames immediately cover the chains. The chains burn with blue flames for a while before freezing right in front of Aizuna's face. Wew, it worked. Snap. Aizuna snapped his finger. Crack, crack. The chains trembled before shattering into countless pieces of ice flakes. The chains turned into nothingness and it leaves not even a fragment of them behind. The snowflakes cover the ground and the temperature drops below the freezing point. This jutsu is quite potent, but I am still not proficient in its uses. I want to use only one hand to manipulate all the nature transformations in the jutsu. Well, that is quite difficult for current me. The complexity involved is way behind my reach, at least for now. Danzo's jutsu shatters and the funjutsu seal formula breaks. His eyes widen and a hint of surprise appears on his face. This, this jutsu? What kind of jutsu did you use? How are you able to use such a powerful ice release technique? As far as I know, you shouldn't be able to use any Kekai Genkai except your Sherinan and Swift Release? How, how can you use so many nature transformations? Danzo questions him in a frenzy. Yes, this will do. Once I kill you, I will ask Orokimaru to study your body. All of your secrets will be mine. Haha. <laughs> Besides, my only task is to kill you, and I will be free from my restraints. The demon only wants your soul, he has no use for your body. Danzo chuckles in madness. Somewhere in Land of Sound. Inside an underground experiment facility. There are multiple humans sealed inside many giant experiment tubes filled with nutritional liquid. Orokimaru walks in front of one of the tube and presses some buttons. It drains the nutritional liquid from the tubes and the tube opens. A white snake grabs the man by the waist and lay him on a table. Hmm. This test subject is in optimal condition. Now, let's start the experiment. Orokimaru ponders to himself. He injects many strange serums inside the man's body. The test subject's body trembles for a while before it explodes into a mess of flesh and blood. Orokimaru wipes the blood from his face. A wide grin appears on his face. Cuckoo. Hiriko, you fool. Did you think that by modifying the crucial step into your experiment log, you will be able to fool me? I have succeeded, I have finally found a method to gain immortality. Orokimaru looks at the puddle of flesh and blood. Looks like I need a potent body to sustain my chakra and life force. Image of Izuna appears in Orokimaru's mind. No, he is too powerful. I can't take the risk. Then the image of Itake appears in Orokimaru's mind. He is quite young, with lots of potentials. If I can get his body, then I will be able to grow even more powerful. Orokimaru licks the blood on his face and walks towards another test subject. Slither, slither. A small white snake coils around Orokimaru's leg and reaches to his ear. Flicker, flicker. The snake flickers its forked tongue near Orokimaru's ear while Orokimaru is pouring some liquid in one of his test tubes. Oh, looks like that little toy of mine has information for me. What was his name? Hmm. Kabuto, was it? Let's meet with him. Orokimaru prepares to walk out of his hideout. Achoo. He sneezes violently. Looks like someone is talking about me behind my back. So, I was right. That purple cloaked guy is still alive. But a demon, I never expected him to be a demon. Well, Danzo could be wrong since they termed all the horned beings as demons and even Atsutsukis have horns. If he is after me, then why would he help Danzo and send him after me? He is powerful enough to bitch slap me and take away the grimoire. Well, I can think about that later. For now, let me kill Danzo again. This time, I will erase him from existence. Time to go full power. Aizuna claps his hands together. Limbo Hangoku. Power release, Chakra Cloak. Some orange chakra flames rise from Aizuna's body and empower his Senjutsu Cloak further. Ha. Huh. It's a futile attempt. Give up, Aizuna Uchiha. Accept your fate. Danzo stretches his hands in front of his chest. The strange marking extends to his hands and forms two diamond-shaped marks in the middle of his palm. Light chakra gathers in his palms and forms a blinding sphere of light. Danzo directs it towards Aizuna and shouts. Light style, salvation bomb. Shum. The light bomb travels extremely fast towards Aizuna. Aizuna looks at the light bomb aiming for him. Looks like my conjecture is correct. Danzo received quite a help from that figure. But if he thinks I will go down this easily, then he is sorely mistaken. Aizuna infuses darkness chakra in his palms. The black chakra rotates in his hand form a compressed spiral of chakra. Darkness style, blackout raisinon. Aizuna throws the raisinon at the light bomb. Boom. Both jutsus collide with each other and their respective elements clash with each other. The polar opposite elements create a violent reaction where one side turns dark and the other side shines brightly. BZZZT. Black and white lightning crackles around their center and the jutsu collapse in itself. The blast releases a violent shock wave, which pushes them back. 
Earth style, rock dome. Aizuna creates a dome to block the shockwaves of the attack. Danzo is blown away by the blast. He grabs holds of the Rashomon gate and takes a foothold on it. Outside the barrier, the sensing sphere distorts from the massive amount of chakra. Its shape distorts to that of a funnel before the sphere collapses. The sensor corp tries their best to prevent it, but the backlash from a sudden chakra outburst pushes them back. Some sensor corp members even bleed from their nose. Their vision is blinded by a radiant display of light. Rumble. Rumble. The brilliant display of blinding light is followed by a massive earthquake. Hiruzen and others manage to stabilize their footing during the shock waves. Sigh. At this point, I really want to know what's actually happening inside this dim barrier. Hiruzen curses in frustration. Chapter 113, 111. Erased from existence. Swoosh. Fwoosh. Stab. A dark blade coated in darkness chakra stabs through Danzo's heart. Barf. Danzo pukes out a mouthful of blood. The darkness chakra corrodes his body and eats away his organs. Arg. Puss leaks from Danzo's body as he winces in pain. What? How? How is this possible? Danzo stares at the blade pierced through his chest. Black fumes rise from the blade. That previous jutsu didn't finish you off. How? How did you survive? Danzo questions Aizuna in a frenzy. Rubble? Rubble. Aizuna pushes away the nearby rubble and walks out from the rock dome. Danzo's eyes widen as he points at a finger at Aizuna. If you are here, then who attacked me? Aizuna slowly walks towards Danzo. Death? Huh? You miraculously defied death once. But will you be able to defy it again? Aizuna smiles at Danzo and draws another blade and pierces it through Danzo's guts. Don't worry, you won't be returning this time. I will obliterate your soul for once and all. Stab, stab. Aizuna ignores Danzo and continues to stab the darkness-coated blade through various parts of Danzo's body. I hope this darkness-infused blade will be able to keep his regeneration factor at bay. If I remember correctly, his regeneration is similar to that cloaked guy. So, it uses light-based chakra to heal from fatal wounds. But darkness chakra can interrupt this healing. I have to separate his soul from his body and to do that I have to first destroy his body. Ah. Uh. Danzo riles up his chakra. Throb, throb. The funjutsu seal on his chest beats violently. It jumps out of Danzo's chest and targets Aizuna. What the fuck? Aizuna jumps back in surprise. He manages to avoid the assault of the seal. An eye opens up on the seal and flashes a yellow light on Aizuna. Strange curse marks appear on his body. What is this? I am sure I avoided that freaking thing. The seal extends all over his body and paralyzes him. Clank, clank. The Sin Grimoire shakes furiously. Strange markings appear from the Sin Seal and they start to neutralize the paralyzing seal. Ha. Danzo frees himself from the bindings of Limbo and quickly arrives in front of Aizuna. The seal will be able to hold you for a few moments. It is enough time to end you for once and all. Ha ha. Finally, I will have my revenge. Danzo grabs the strange seal eye and slams it towards Aizuna's chest. I will be a goner if that hit me. Think Aizuna, think. I have to think of a solution to escape this predicament. Aizuna churns the gears of his brain. Got it. I am an idiot. Why I never thought of this before. Aizuna clicks his right molar. Substitution jutsu. Swoosh. Shum. Slam. Danzo slams his palm on Aizuna's chest. Various sealing formula erupts from the seal and binds Aizuna's body. Farewell, Aizuna Uchiha. This is what you said to me right. I will throw them back at you. Haha. <laughs> Now I will be the sole leader of Kanaha. No, the entire shinobi world. All five nations will bow before my might. I will deal with Hiruzen after this, and I will force other clan leaders to submit to me. Haha. <laughs> Danzo fantasizes about his sunny days. Darkness release, big blackout rays non. Slam. Bam. A giant fuming black rays non smashes into Danzo. Shum. The rays non hurls Danzo in the air and explodes. An enormous amount of darkness chakra invades Danzo's body and corrodes it inside out. Gua. Danzo pukes out black blood and weakly stares at Aizuna. How? A weak shriek comes out from Danzo's throat. Aizuna slowly walks in front of Danzo. The light chakra continues to heal Danzo's body whereas the darkness chakra erodes it. Stuck in an endless loop of agony and torment, Danzo weakly questions Aizuna. I have already fought with your so-called demon before. Aizuna slowly reaches near Danzo's body. He makes some strange hand signs and hovers his hand above Danzo's head. I hope it works. If not, I will haunt Fukazaka for providing me with fake scrolls. Soul art, soul body separation. Aizuna draws out a transparent apparition from Danzo's body. The apparition takes the form of Danzo. He surveys the apparition. Hmm, so this is how a soul looks like on close-up. This jutsu is similar to the Narika path power of Rinnegan. Narika path is more efficient, I have to say. Well, I have to do it with this makeshift jutsu. If it works, it works. No, arg, no, don't kill me. No, don't. Danzo's soul pleads hysterically. Did you spare the people you killed just now? You partnered with Akatsuki and slaughtered almost the entire clan, and now you expect me to spare you. Dream on. Aizuna makes some more hand signs and claps his hands together. Outside the barrier, Tsunade clenches her fist and infuses a large amount of Senjutsu Chakra in her hands. Sage Art, Heavenly Spear Punch. Tsunade focuses almost all of her Sage Chakra on tip of her fist. The concentrated takes shape of a Cyan Spear. Bam. Tsunade punches the barrier with all her strength. 
Crack, crack. Various spiderweb-like cracks appear on the green barrier. Snap. The green barrier shatters into countless shards. Sunaid continues to punch through the barrier. Her fist collides with the demonic Rashomon gate. Bam. A giant dent appears on the gate as it protrudes out from the back. Swa. The demonic eyes shine brightly and start to repair the gate. Not so fast. Ha. Sunaid pushes forwards as she applies more force in her attack. Bang, swoosh. She successfully blows away a giant hole through the Rashomon gate. Swee. The light in demonic eyes dims down. Poof. The gate disappears in a giant puff of smoke, and the barrier disperses. Sunaid senses Aizuna's chakra and quickly runs in his direction. Hiruzen and other Umbu members and clan leaders follow her. All of them arrive before Aizuna. His back is turned towards them as he held Danzo's souls. Are you alright, Aizuna? You aren't injured, right? Sunaid quickly questions him. Aizuna turns around and faces them. It surprises him to see the entire village gathered here. I am fine, Sunaid. Please quickly check on my clansmen. They need your medical expertise, Sunaid. Sunaid nods her head and claps her hand. Katsuyu. Yes, Sunaid Asama. Immense network healing. Sunaid infuses a large amount of chakra and sink with Katsuyu. Katsuyu splits into multiple smaller clones and spread throughout Konoha. Sunaid heals the injured Uchiha clan members. Hiruzen sighs and looks at the death and destruction around him. Uchiha clan is almost on the brink of extinction. I never thought such a thing will happen to one of the most powerful clans of Konoha. Hiruzen turns towards Aizuna and questions him. Aizunakan, do you know the culprit behind this massacre? I do. Aizuna kicks the corpse of Danzo in front of Hiruzen. Your old and most trusted friend Danzo is the culprit. He joined hands with Akatsuki and slaughtered my clan. What? What are you talking about? Don't spout such nonsense and defame one of Kanaha's elders. Kohara and Homura defend Danzo. Aizuna reveals his Manjikyo Sherry non to them and replies. You won't believe me, even if you see it with your eyes. Your blind trust in Danzo encouraged him to commit such treacherous crimes. You may have spared him, but I won't spare him. Jinjutsu, Sherry non. Watch his filthy deeds with your own eyes. Look at how atrociously he orchestrated a genocide in my clan. Aizuna grabs the soul of Danzo and shouts. Soul art, yin yang release, death to all creation. A formless power grabs hold of Danzo's soul. The pressure from the technique encompasses nearby onlookers. It forces all of them to bow on the ground. The elders caught off guard face plants on the ground. The technique slowly erases Danzo's soul from existence. The frantic shouts of Danzo deafen their ears. Hiruzen weakly looks at this scene and sighs. You reap what you sow, my friend. Perhaps I am a failure as a friend too. I wasn't able to pull you from darkness and instead I pushed you into it. Danzo's soul vanishes from existence. Huff, huff. Aizuna pants from exhaustion. The previous fight has taken a toll on his body, especially the yin-yang technique. I am still far from six paths power. Only a single yin-yang technique is my limit for now. Yin-yang technique requires balance in all things, and so it is fundamentally different from elemental techniques. My affinity for yin-yang allowed me to push this technique. But this is how far I can go without proper training. Aizuna slumps on the ground. Sunaid immediately catches him and hugs him tightly. Ah, this is a blissful end at least for now. Aizuna passes out in Sunaid's embrace. A slash n. So, we have officially wrapped up the Uchiha Massacre arc. Comment down your thoughts on this arc. Chapter 114, 112. Itaka Shinden, A Sleepless Night. Itaka silently lies on a bed as he stares at the fitful silvery crimson moonlight. Many dense, turbulent clouds will occasionally float by and block the moonlight. Itaka stretches his bandaged arm towards the sky as he gazes out of the window. Life is meaningless. Itaka clenches his fingers into a fist and contemplates. Every life dies, one day. There is no eternal life. Itaka sits up and removes the four drip from his arm and continues to stare at the starless sky. What am I living for? Is it for my friends? Happy memories of Izumi, Tenma, and Shinko flashes through his mind. Is it for my family? Happy memories of Izuna, Shisui, and Naruto flashes through his mind. Itaka further clenches his fist tightly. Is it for my loved ones? Happy memories of his time with father, mother, and little brother Suzuki flashes through his mind. Itaka further clenches his fist. Blood leaks from his fist. Itaka ignores the blood and continues to question himself. If I am living for them, then I want to protect them. But why? Why am I so weak? I saw my entire clan getting slaughtered in front of me and, and I was powerless to do anything. Bang. Itaka slams his palm on a nearby table as tears flow from his eyes. Sob, sob. Itaka silently sobs to himself as he continues to cry. Let it all out. Itaka raises his head and notices Shisui resting against the window wall. Let all of your emotions, hatred, grief, sorrow out. Let out everything. You will feel much better. Shisui walks up to Itaki. He pulls out a bandage from a nearby drawer and wraps it around Itaki's palm. Shisui nods to Itaki and jumps out of the window. Ha. Huh. Itaki wipes his tears and slowly gets up. He slowly walks towards the window and looks at the night sky. Swoosh. Itaki jumps out from the window and flickers away. MMM, the air is listless and dreary today, just like that day. Shisui takes out a pale green scarf from his pocket. There are some bloodstains on the scarf. He silently caresses the scarf and looks at the distant horizon. Tiptoe. Itaka noiselessly walks up to Shisui and lies beside him. 
Shisui notices Itaki but ignores his presence for a while. Itaki. The sudden address from Shisui startles Itaki. Yeah, yes, Shisui Nyaizen. He replies erratically. So, have you calmed down a little? Shisui asks Itaki. Yes, I have calmed down a lot. But, but I am lost now. I can't see a path forward. What should I do now? I want to protect my family, but I feel that I am not strong enough to protect them. Itaka tells his dilemma to Shisui. Shisui raises his eyebrow when Itaka mentions this. He sighs and replies to Itaka. I also went through the same phase as you. Shisui shows the torn and tattered scarf with blood stains to Itaka. This is a gift from my friend. Seven years, it has been seven years since I parted with her. We were on a mission with Aizen and Aizen. The mission was a trap laid for us and we feel for it. In that mission, I lost two of my teammates, Kazuko and Mami. It was her who made this scarf for me with her clumsy hands. Shisui tucks away the scarf and turns towards Itaki. He activates his Manjikyo Sherinan and shows them to Itaki. These eyes. Itaki. These eyes are a symbol of our failure. Whenever an Uchiha loses something very precious to him, his body triggers a change. The greater the feelings, the greater the change. Shisui looks towards Itaki and notices his expression. Itaki is listening attentively to Shisui. Shisui nods his head and continues. These emotions release a strange chakra in our optic nerves and change our Sherinan. It is at this moment, we awaken the greatest cursed power of the Uchiha clan, the Manjikyo Sherinan. Itaka's eyes widen in surprise as he comes to know the truth behind Manjikyo Sherinan. These eyes grant their user enormous power in exchange for their vision. The more you use this power, the greater the loss of vision. So, you have to pay a price to use such great power. Shisui sighs and turns towards the sky. This is what big brother Aizuna told me? Sigh. I always wonder how he figured out such secrets that are unknown to most of the members of our clan. Itaki, find your own ninja way. Your family doesn't need your protection, what they need is your attention and love. Manjikyo Sherinan is a power that relies on our emotions. If you fail to control your negative emotions, this power will consume you. I am sure Aizen and Aizen will agree with me. Shisui closes his eyes and gets back to his contemplation. Itaka stands with firm resolve. I think I have figured out the direction. What is a ninja? Why do we fight? I may not have reached the depth of these questions, but one day I will find my ninja way. Itaka mutter to himself. He turns towards Shisui and bows to him. Thank you, Shisui Nyaizen. Shisui pats Itaka's back and laughs. We are family, right? Why do you need to thank me? It is my duty to take care of my family. Itaka flashes a smile at Shisui and flickers away. Shisui smiles at the retreating back of Itaka. Sigh. Looks like it will be another sleepless night. I have to get stronger too. I can't allow Itaka to leave me in the dust. Shisui stands up and looks at the vast expanse of the village. In Mount Mayaboku, the great toad sage opens his eyes from his long meditation. Substantial changes are coming in the future. I can see multiple children of prophecy in my divination. Looks like one child of prophecy isn't enough for the chaotic future. Great Toad Sage looks at the stars in his skies and spot a star shining brighter in the center of many bright stars. Looks like fate has gathered all children of prophecy around him. Great Toad Sage closes his eyes again and returned to his meditation. Chapter 115, 113. Aftermath Part 1. Ah, it feels so good. I haven't had such a pleasant sleep in the past two years. Aizuna lazily stretches out his hands and yawns. Before he could open his eyes properly, he is bear-hugged by somebody. My Aizuna, you are all right. Thank God, nothing happened to you. I am all right, Mom. I was just exhausted from the fight. Nothing happened to me. Aizuna hugs his mother. Okay, okay. Mother was worried about you. Aiko leaves Aizuna from her embrace. She picks up an apple from the nearby basket and peels it for him. Aizuna Nai Aizen. Aizuna Nai Aizen. Aizuna Nai Aizen. Captain. Shisui, Itaki, Suzuki, Naruto, and Kakashi barge inside the room. He slowly sits up and greets everyone. Yo, you all seem quite energetic as usual. Naruto jumps on Aizuna and hugs him. Shisui, Itaki, and Suzuki walk near him. Thank God, Nyaizen. You are fine. We were worried about you. Your Nyaizen won't go down this easily. It will take more than that to take me down. Aizuna flashes a smile to them. I will become a strong ninja like you, Aizuna Nyaizen. Databia. Naruto raises his fist. Yes, of course. Our Naruto will become the strongest Hokage right. Aizuna cheers Naruto. Yes, Databia. Aizuna notices the gloomy expression of Suzuki and Itaki. What's the matter, Suzuki? Why are you so upset? Suzuki hugs Aizuna and tears up. Nyaizen. I was sleeping with mother. Then, then. Suzuki continues to sob. Aizuna pats his head to calm him down. I heard a large explosion. The explosion woke me up. Mother tried to make me fall asleep, but I pretended to fall asleep. Later I saw Uncle Yagami carrying father on his shoulders to our house through the window. Sob, sob. Father's entire body was purple. I think he was poisoned, I read the symptoms of poison in a book. Mother left me to tend to father. Suzuki pulls Aizuna's sleeves. Father will be alright, Nyaizen. He will, right? Suzuki questions Aizuna with teary eyes. Yes, yes, he will be alright. Tsunadison is the best doctor in our village. She will nurse Uncle Fugaku to full health. Everything will be alright. Suzuki continues. Then, 
Then I saw a man wearing a cloak with a red cloud pattern enter inside Grandma Fury's house. I heard Grandma Fury's scream and, and, I saw the cloaked man, stabbing a kunao in Grandma Fury's neck. Wah, Suzuki starts to wail. Izuna pats Suzuki's head while consoling him. Everything will be alright, Suzuki. We will find the culprit and will make him pay for his crimes. Suzuki cries for a while. Tears flow from Suzuki's eyes as he hugs Izuna and passes out. Izuna senses a small flux of chakra in Suzuki's body directed towards his eyes. Looks like Suzuki awakened his Sherinan. It must have put a burden on Suzuki's body since Suzuki is such an emotional kid. Izuna closes his eyes and gathers some nature energy. He directs the nature energy in Suzuki's body and rejuvenates his body. Suzuki soundly sleeps in his arms. Izuna picks him and lays him on the bed beside him. Aiko walks towards Suzuki and caresses him. Poor kid. He suffered such trauma at such an age. Aiko continues to caress Suzuki. She turns towards Kakashi. How are you doing, Kakashikan? Aiko asks Kakashi. I am doing fine, Aiko-san. Father is also fine, he is mostly busy with the elder council and stuff. Kakashi takes an apple from Aiko. So, what are you doing here, Naruto? Shouldn't you be at home? Aizuna question Naruto. Nyaizen. Tsunade Basin and Shizen Nisan are busy in the hospital. There are lots of sick people today for some reason. So, Tsunade Basin brought me to the hospital. I saw Shisui Nyaizen and others. So, I followed them. Aizuna pats Naruto's head. Okay, Naruto, I have to talk some serious matter with Itaki and Shisui. You should go and play over there. Okay, Nyaizen. Naruto dashes away. Aizuna looks towards Itaki for a while. Shisui walks up to him and mutters something in his ear. Aizuna nods and addresses Itaki. Itaki, you are strong, both in mind and body. Don't allow this incident to break your strong will and resolve. It is fine to feel hatred. Channel that hatred towards your enemies and burn them with it. Itaki clenches his fist and closes his eyes as the memory of that incident appears in his mind. The sense of helplessness and despair tries to overwhelm him. Don't get consumed by your hatred. Hatred is born in order to protect the love. You have a family behind you. All of us worry and care for you. Channel that love and make it your strength. I am sure you will be able to overcome this incident and will be able to lead the Uchiha clan in the future. You will be the future leader of the Uchiha clan. Itaki opens his eyes to reveal Mangekyo Sherinan. Yes, Aizen and Aizen. I will try my best. Itaki nods his head with firm resolve. Yes, I believe in you. Aizen nods his head. Knock, knock. A medical nun knocks on the door. Come in, please. The medical nun enters the room and informs them. Fugaku Uchiha has gained consciousness. I am sure all of you are eager to meet him. Itaka quickly dashes out of the room. Shisui and Aiko follow him. The medical nun nods to Aizuna. It has been a while, Aizunakan. Yes, it has been a while, Sayorazan. I am fine. Please look after other people. Sayori walks out of the room. Only Kakashi and Aizuna remain in the room. Kakashi walks near Aizuna and speaks. How are you doing, Captain? Kakashi, I am not your captain anymore. Just call me Aizuna like you did before. Aizuna interrupts Kakashi. Kakashi ignores Aizuna's remark and continues. This incident. I never expected Danzo was involved in this matter. He tried to win me over multiple times in his route, but I refused him every time. I never expected him to possess such sinister means. Kakashi takes support against the wall while eating the apple. Aizuna silently stares outside of the window while pondering on something. Should I reveal the identity of the masked man to Kakashi? Aizuna ponders for a while before shaking his head. Kakashi is not ready yet. He may have overcome the grief, but deep down I can still feel a guilty conscience from him. If I reveal Obito's identity to him, then I am sure just like canon Naruto. Kakashi will chase after Obito. Things are different for Obito. He is being manipulated by Zetsu, but Suzuki was different. I think it is not viable to reveal the truth yet. Sigh. Aizuna sighs and looks towards Kakashi. Kakashi. Danzo hired Akatsuki for the job. Akatsuki is full of strength criminals and above. In the future, we will have to face them again. I want you to grow stronger. So, if you meet them in the future, you will be able to fight evenly against them. This. Captain, are Akatsuki members really so strong? The village doesn't have much intel on their members. Kakashi asks him. Yes, they are very strong. You cannot fight them alone. Aizuna throws a scroll towards Kakashi. Kakashi catches the scroll and reads it. His expression turns ugly as he reads the scroll. Kakashi returns the scroll to Aizuna. Sigh. All of them are monsters. The Akatsuki members are powerful. I never expected this. They have a god, zombie, and undead on their side. What a drag. Kakashi sighs and finishes the apple. Aizuna speechlessly looks at Kakashi. Looks like he has picked my habit of using words from my former world. But what's with this Nara clan's verbal tick? Kakashi, you lazy bum. You should train, otherwise I will inform Uncle Sakumo about your new hobby. Aizuna pulls out a book from Kakashi's rear pocket. Ika Ika Paradise? Quite a weird hobby you have picked Kakashi. Kakashi immediately snatches the book and caress it. I am a man of culture, and this book is the holy grail for every man of culture. It is such a great book by the legendary son in Jiraiya. It is a complex book involving the adventures of a brave hero. How the hero falls in love with his heroine. How both of them confess their first love to each other and how their adventures entail with many ups and down. 
Kakashi explains the plot of the book as he has a perverted expression on his face. Really, Izuna remarks with disinterest and disapproval. That pervert Jiraiya has come up this. Should I inform Tsunade about it? No, don't do it or I will expose your dark secrets to the entire village. Kakashi immediately shouts at Izuna. My dark secrets? What dark secrets? Kakashi reaches near Izuna's ear and mutters something. Izuna's expression turn ugly. No, you don't Kakashi. Don't you dare reveal it to anybody. Izuna screams in fluster. Okay, okay, I won't. This is a promise between man. You won't do anything to my holy grail, I won't reveal your secrets. Kakashi smirks. You got me, Kakashi hey take. Fine, it's a deal, but keep your end of the promise. Also, let's meet up in training ground 7 for more training at a later date. Whistle, whistle. Kakashi walks out of the room while whistling. Damn, how did this jerk found about that? Izuna chomps down an entire apple to release some of his frustration. Chapter 116, 114. Aftermath Part 2. A slash N. So, I will be releasing at least 910 chapters a week from now on. I don't have any exam for at least next three weeks. At the Leaf Village Cemetery. The remaining members of the Uchiha clan are silently mourning the death of their loved ones. Fugaku Uchiha silently stands at the front of the clan as his eyes are closed. My clan has met with such an unfortunate incident and I was powerless to do anything. Fugaku clenches his fist as he stares at the gravestone of his friends and clan members. Almost 60%, almost 60% of Uchiha clan members died in this incident. Fugaku remembers the tally of dead clansmen. 70 people were slaughtered in this attack. They were assassinated silently and most of them were killed in gruesome ways. Nerves popped out in Fugaku's hand as he clenched his fist harder. Blood leaks from his palm. Our once noble clan of elites has fallen to such a down crest position. Most of the remaining members are non-shinobis and only a handful of them are ninjas. Mikato pulls Fugaku's hand and shakes her head. Fugaku sighs and closes his eyes. The remaining Uchiha clan silently prays for the rest of the dead as tears flow from their eyes. Izuna silently mourns the death of his clan members as he remembers the faces of some clan members. Many of them were so kind and friendly to me, but I allowed them to die such an unfortunate death. Some things still happened despite my presence, but I never expected Danzo to be alive and hire Akatsuki to start a slaughter. Next time, if I see any Akatsuki member, I will kill them with no hesitation. There will be no mercy for them. Tears flow through his eyes as he recalls the state of many corpses. Most of their eyes were missing. Some corpses have even their heart stolen and some of them were dismembered beyond recognition. Crunch, crunch. Izuna lifts his head as he hears the sound of footsteps crushing the gravel in the cemetery. It was an unfortunate turn of series, all of you have my condolences. Hiruzen and the rest of the elder council members slowly approach the Uchiha clan and stand beside them. They close their eyes to pay homage to the dead. Uchiha clan has fallen out of grace. With their downfall, they are no longer a part of the noble clans of Kanaha. Koharu closes her eyes as she mutters these words. Looks like some subtle changes are going to happen in the power scale of the village. Homura remarks as he closes his eyes. Izuna raises his eyebrows as he hears the content of the conversation. These pairs of old bones are playing politics at such an occasion. I have to somehow kick them out of the elder council. They have corroded the village together with Danzo. It's time for some new people to join the council. I have to think of a way to instate Tsunade as the fifth Hokage. Sigh. But she won't abide by my request. I have already asked too much from her. Izuna looks at the carving of Minato on the Hokage monument. Minato, Kushina, I will revive you soon. Just wait a bit longer. Kohara, Homura. Let's leave the political matter for the later meeting. We are in the middle of a funeral. Hiruzen reminds them. Koharu and Homura stop their conversation and closes their eyes. After the funeral ceremony, the Uchiha clan members slowly disperse as they tend to the graves of their loved ones. Fugaku slowly walks in front of his family. Suzuki is holding Mikato's hand as he silently stares at the grave of an old woman. Suzuki, let's give some company to Grandma Fury. Mikato carries Suzuki towards one of the grave. Fugaku stares at Izuna, Shisui, and Itaka for a while before a sigh escapes from his mouth. Sigh, you three are the hope of the Uchiha clan. With so many capable ninjas gone, the Uchiha clan will suffer from further prejudice and scorn. The Nine Tails incident had already soiled our reputation with false rumors and then the coup d'etat. Fugaku stares at Shisui and Itaki. You were aware, father. Itaki gulps his saliva. Who do you think am I? I already suspected you as a double agent when I saw you snooping around near various elders' house. Fugaku activates his Manjikyo Sherinan and shows it to Itaki. Shisui and Itaki are surprised to see his Manjikyo. During the Third Shinobi War, I lost a close friend of mine and gained the power of Manjikyo. Izuna activates his Manjikyo Sherinan and shows Fugaku. You aren't the only one who lost a friend in the Third War, Fugaku-san. Shisui and Itaki also activate their Manjikyo Sherinan. What? Fugaku's eyes widen as he stares at the group. I expected Izunakun to have the power of Manjikyo, but Shisui and even you Itaki. Father, I awakened my Manjikyo in this massacre. Itaki replies sadly. Sigh. Fugaku sighs and pats Itaki's shoulder. You have gone through a lot recently. I don't want Suzuki to go through similar things. So, let's try to protect that smile of his. Itaka looks at the sad expression of Suzuki, who is praying in front of the grave. 
Yes, father, I will protect that smile of his. Itaka turns to Shisui and speaks. Shisui Nyaizen, I think I have found my ninja way. I don't have any big ambition or goals. I just want to protect the smile of my family. I don't want to feel the same sense of despair and helplessness again. So, I will grow stronger to protect that smile. Shisui smiles at Itaki and pats his head. Yes, you will. I will always have your back. Shisui places his arm on Itaki's shoulder. And I will have yours. Aizuna hugs both of them. Fugaku looks at their interaction and a smile replaces his ever-present frown. Looks like there is still hope for my Uchiha clan. But first, I have to deal with the dirty politics of the village. Fugaku frowns as he spots an Umbu member walking towards him. Aizuna and the rest notice him too. Aizuna nods to Shisui and Itake. Both of them flicker away. After relaying the message to Fugaku, the Umbu member flickers away. I will accompany you Fugaku-san. Aizuna walks towards and stands in front of Fugaku. Fugaku ponders for a while before he nods his head. That would be great. Let's go to the meeting. Inside the meeting room. Various elders of the village sit around a large round table. Hiruzen sits in the middle of the table with Koharu and Homura on his sides. Many other clan leaders are also taking part in the meeting. Fugaku and Aizuna enter inside the meeting room. Koharu and Homura frown when they notice Aizuna in this meeting. What's the meaning of this, Fugaku Uchiha? It is a meeting of council elders and clan leaders. Why have you brought a clan member in this meeting? Koharu questions Fugaku. Aizuna stares at Koharu. It's fine, Koharu. Aizuna Uchiha is an elite jounin of our village. His achievements are more than enough to grant him an elder position in the village council. If it wasn't for his age, I would have upvoted him for Hokage's position. Hiruzen interrupts Koharu. What? This pervert old geezer has such a high opinion of me. Hmph. <laughs> Koharu snorts and ignores Hiruzen's remark. This granny wants an early retirement. She freaking lived till Naruto's reign as a Hokage and interferes in his rule. Soon, I will give her a long vacation. Aizuna takes a seat beside Sakumo and calmly looks at the rest of the clan leaders. Hmm. From their expression, I can see that Hayaga clan, Abarame clan, Nara clan, Yamanaka clan, and Akimichi clan have no feud with Uchiha clan. He continues to stare at the rest of the middle-sized clan members. Huh. Karema clan leader seems to be excited a little. From his heartbeat, his erratic breathing, I can feel his excitement. Hmm, let's see what he has to say during this meeting. Soon, all clan leaders arrive for the meeting. Hiruzen raises his hand and signals the start of the meeting. Let's start the meeting. Hiruzen stands up and walks to the center of the round table to address the clan leaders. As all of you know, the Uchiha clan was attacked two days ago. In the night's silence, Akatsuki members attacked the Uchiha clan and killed most of their members. Hiruzen pauses and stares at the rest of the people. The clan leader nods their head. This attack placed a heavy burden on the power structure of the village. We have lost almost all of the police force members and the security of the village is in jeopardy. So, I would like to. I have something to say, Hokage-sama. Aizuna interrupts Hiruzen. Homura frowns and rebukes Aizuna. Brat, we are still in the middle of our discussion. Don't interrupt the meeting and waste our time. Hiruzen silently stares at their interaction as he awaits Aizuna's response. Bam. Aizuna smashes the table and stands up. The matters of village politics has got nothing to do with me. I want to ask the elder council, especially you two. Aizuna points fingers at Koharu and Homura. Why haven't you announced the name of the instigator of the Uchiha massacre event yet? Bam. The table breaks from the force exerted by Aizuna. Fugaku looks at Aizuna and wonders. It was worth it to bring him here. He can voice his opinion and thoughts much more openly than me. A slash N, Uchiha clan is in a weird spot right now. They are suspected of the Nine Tails incident and the coup d'etat. This massacre has declined their power. I want Uchiha clan to assert their dominance. So, the next two chapters will have some politics stuff involved. This is required for the plot and for the Uchiha clan to grow as a powerhouse. P.S. Hayaga Affair Part 3 will be released tomorrow alongside regular chapter. Chapter 117, 115. Politics of the Village Part 1. Bam. The table breaks from the force of the strike. Hiruzen frowns and pensively looks at Aizuna. Koharu and Homura's expression turns ugly. Brat, what is the meaning of this disrespect? You are in front of the elders of the village. You can't demean the prestige of the village elders with such blatant accusation. Koharu remarks angrily. Aizuna ignores her and turns towards Hiruzen. Hokage-sama, I am sure you know what I am getting at. It is pointless to act as a bystander in this situation. Sigh. Hiruzen sighs and rubs his forehead. Aizuna, I am aware of the entire matter. But revealing this matter to other villagers could have serious repercussions on the stability of the village. I don't want this news to create distrust among various villagers and lose their faith in the village and its elders. So, we have to suppress the information of the instigator. Aizuna frowns and raises his eyebrow. Hokage-sama, this won't do. You want the village elders to get away scot-free from the Uchiha's clan massacre. Who should we hold responsible for the downfall of my Uchiha clan? If you want to suppress the news of the instigator, then our Uchiha clan won't be part of such a village. Together with the remaining members of the Uchiha clan, we will leave the village and will settle somewhere else. Aizuna stares at Hiruzen's eyes. His body releases an invisible pressure as the temperature of the room drops. Aizuna secretly uses his arctic release to lower the temperature of the room. 
Some old council members shiver from the cold and tightly hugs their body. Audacious. Homura stands up from his seat and yells at Aizuna. You have guts to blame the village. Homura cleverly plays a word game by manipulating Aizuna's words. Your Uchiha clan planes a coup d'etat against the village. The ambition of the Uchiha clan had grown to such an extreme that they even thought of overthrowing the Hokage. Homura continues as he shifts the blame on the Uchiha clan. What? Many clan leaders looked at Fugaku with shock. Fugaku ignores their gaze as he continues to look at Aizuna. Enough? Homura. Hiruzen tries to interrupt Homura, but he ignores Hiruzen's warning and continues. If not for this Uchiha massacre, the Uchiha clan would have started the fourth ninja war greatly harming the interest of village and other clans. Koharu notices the ugly expression on the various clan leaders' faces. Not only that, many smaller clans of Kanaha would have suffered extinction from the combined attack of other nations and the large clans probably would have been severely weakened. She continues Homura's words. Even you two, Koharu. Hiruzen stares at Koharu with a blank gaze. Koharu and Homura calmly stare at Hiruzen and speaks. What Danzo has done might be wrong, but his opinion regarding you is correct. We have contributed our entire life to the welfare of the village. We stood firm among all those ups and downs and now a brat who barely lived past 15 years is questioning our loyalty to the village. Homura and Koharu walk up to Hiruzen and confront him. Tell us, Hiruzen. Is this how we get repaid for our years of service to the village? We are the elders of the village council. We have earned this position through blood and sweat. We went through so much toil and trouble only to get rebuked. Both of them emotionally overwhelm Hiruzen, who backs down from their rapid assault of emotional speech. Sigh. Hiruzen sighs and stops. I am too soft. I was never suitable for the Hokage's position. Hiruzen backs down in guilt. Homura and Koharu look at each other and smirks. We have been ruling this village for so many years from the shadow. How can we allow such a brat to outdo so in politics? Clap, clap. Aizuna claps at the heart-touching speech of the elders and slowly walks in front of them. He faces against them and remarks. Looks like you two old senile geezers aren't aware of your misdeeds. Or rather, you deny them. You are just accepting your act of misdeed as the rightful benefit provided to you with your position. Homura and Kohara's expression turns unsightly. Oh, that hit right on the sore spot. Both of your faces look like you have eaten a pile of shit just now. What, what are you trying to say, kid? Don't, don't falsely accuse us of such crimes. We, can forgive your earlier offense, but don't go overboard with your words. Homura flusters as his voice breaks. Still living in denial. It's fine then, I also won't mind unearthing some dirty deeds of the so-called elders of the village. Aizuna turns towards the entrance of the meeting room and shouts. Kakashi. Shisui. Itaki. Three of them enter the meeting room and bows before Aizuna. Yes, Captain. Have you brought the things I asked you? Aizuna questions them. Yes, we have brought the proof. Kakashi, Shisui, and Itaka takes out some scrolls from their pocket and hands them to Aizuna. Good, now stand aside and enjoy the show. The three of them stand beside Aizuna and stare at the elders. Sakumo eyes widen as he looks at Kakashi. I never saw Kakashi with such a spirit. His easygoing nature is nowhere to be seen. I must ask him later about this matter. For now, I must focus my attention on this matter. Sakumo turns towards Aizuna and ponders. Back then, this kid helped me recover from my sorrow and guilt. I felt something drawing me towards this kid. In just a few years, he has grown to such an extent. It is almost dreamlike. Aizuna opens the first scroll and reveals the scandal of the two elders. This scroll in my hands contains the detailed information of the money received by two of them as a bribe from many civilians of the village. Aizuna throws the list of all civilians and the amount towards Hiruzen. They have received almost 100 billion ryo as a bribe in these past 50 years during their time in the Elder Council. What? The various clan elders are flabbergasted by this figure of number. Hiruzen immediately schemes through the scroll and his expression turn grave. Achu, Outside the borders of Tanagakur. Kakuza sneezes as he rubs his nose. I feel like I missed a hell lot of money. He takes out a scroll from his pocket and tosses it in his hand. Anyway, I have made a haul on this trip. Your haul would have cost us our life, if not for the timely arrival of Zetsu. Fushin remarks. Shut the fuck up, bastard. Or I won't mind slicing you open. Kakuza growls. Kakuzu is still as energetic as ever. White Zetsu remarks as he moves alongside them. Sasori silently follows behind as he mutters to himself. There will be more opportunities in the future. Fugaku Uchiha, one day I will certainly add you to my collection. All of them reach outside a cave. Kakuza and Sasori make some hand signs, and the giant boulder at the entrance moves aside. All of them enter inside the cave and the entrance closes. Zetsu hands over rings to Akatsuki members and explains. These are the symbol of Akatsuki. You can lose your limbs, but you can't lose them. Kakuzu inspects the ring and flips it in his hand. I will consider it worthy only if it has some value in money. Every ring is made of special chakra alloy cast from a star meteorite, and it would cost a fortune to get your hands on this alloy. There are only 12 of such rings in this world, so you can guess the value of this ring. Black Zetsu explains to them. What? Kakuzu's mouth opens wide as he shows his creepy stitches. Then I will never separate it from my body. He immediately wears the ring on the assigned finger. These rings are not just for show, they have a special use to them. Black Zetsu explains to them. Try to infuse your chakra in them. 
Kakuzu, Sasori, and Fushin immediately infuse their chakra in the rings. A hologram-like construct of chakra releases from their body. This ring acts as a communication device. You can contact other Akatsuki members through this ring. I will explain later the other uses of this ring. Black Zetsu remarks. Oh, this is quite handy. Fushin closely inspects the ring. BZZZ, BZZT. The ring produces some static noises. All of them infuse their chakra inside the ring. A hologram projection of pain appears before them. The image looks at them for a while before it opens its mouth. Looks like all of you have received the gift. He looks around and a frown appears on his face. Where is Dino? I can't see him around. Pain questions them. Dino is dead. The Shinigami of Kanaha returned to the village and killed him. Zetsu calmly replies. Hmm, that was unexpected. We made our preparations with Shinigami in the account. So, how could such a miscalculation happen? Dino, that maniac blindly engaged in a fight with the Shinigami and got slaughtered by him. Sasori calmly replies to Pain. So, you are left without any partner, Sasori. Pain ponders for a while. I have a certain person in mind. Let's meet with him later. Sasori nods his head, and the projection of Pain disappears. Chapter 118, 116. Politics of the Village Part 2. A slash N. I will post the Hayaga Part 3 at a later date. There will be a plot in future where it will fit in perfectly. So, wait for few more days. Bam. Hiruzen slams his palm on the table and snaps at Koharu and Homura. Is it true, Koharu? Homura. We, we, it's not like what you think, Hiruzen. It is. Bam. Hiruzen slaps his palm on the table. Just answer my question. Is it true or not? Homura sighs and replies. Yes, it is true. But Hiruzen, we dedicated 50 years of our lives to the village, we can't just. Bam. No buts. I don't want to hear any excuse from you two. I was a fool to trust both of you. I never expected in all these years, both of you and Danzo played me like a fiddle. What expression would Sensei show when he learns about this matter? Both of you are a disgrace to Sensei's legacy. His students crushed his dream for a perfect village. Sigh. Hiruzen slumps down in his chair. Hiruzen, we can explain. It is not like how you think. Give us a chance to explain ourselves. Koharu tries to protest. There is nothing left to explain. You two get out of my sight. I don't want to see your face anymore. Hiruzen waves his hand. A few umbu surrounds Koharu and Homura. One of them escort them out of the room. Please. Koharu and Homura silently walk towards the exit. Wait, a sec. A loud voice interrupts them. Since you have already learned of this matter, there is no harm in knowing more. Izuna passes another scroll to Hiruzen. Hokage Sama, this scroll contains the information of all plots orchestrated by Danzo outside the village. Please have a look at it and decide yourself. Hiruzen picks up the scroll with shaking hands while Izuna starts to narrate the incident. Let me start with the Second Shinobi War. Danzo collaborated with Hanzo of the Omegakur. He started a slaughter in Omegakur and killed many innocent civilians. He disguised his root members as the shinobi of other villages and fanned the flames of war. It was him who was responsible for the death of many elite shinobis of Kanaha. Izuna throws another scroll towards Hiruzen. This is a proof of collaboration with Hanzo. I dug it out from his root. Izuna stares at various other clan leaders as he continues. I have an interesting piece of news for all of you. I don't know if you will like it or not. What is it? Izunakan. Shikako calmly asks him. I would also like to hear it. Shivi Abarame slowly opens his mouth. Hmm. Hmm. Chosa Akimichi nods his head in agreement. Just spit it out, brat. Don't test our patience. Karama clan leader gnashes his teeth. Izuna frowns and stares at Karama clan elder before turning away. Karama clan elder feels a chill running down his spine. The temperature around him drops and his blood starts to freeze. He anxiously rubs his hands to warm himself up. What's going on? Why am I the only one who is feeling so cold? I won't waste your time. All of you must be aware of the fact that many talented ninjas of your clan either died in war or mysteriously disappeared. Hmm. They nod their head in agreement. So, what you mean to say is, all of it is related to Danzo, one way or another, Shikako concludes. It's not related. It's him to be exact. Almost 80% of the time, he will either deploy his root umbus to get rid of them or will recruit them in his root and will brainwash them to only serve himself. Izuna throws a scroll containing the list of missing ninjas towards Shikako. Shikako catches the scroll and schemes through it. A frown appears on his face. He passes the scroll to Yamanaka clan leader. One by one all of them read the content of the scroll and their expression turns ugly. What's the meaning of this, Hokage-sama? Various clan leaders slam their hands on the table. The table crumbles under their strike. Wait, wait. It's not over yet. Let me finish my statement. Aizuna calms them down. So where was I? Ah, uh, yes, yes. After the second ninja war, Danzo wasn't satisfied with the result of the war. So, he cooked another scheme. What scheme? All of them question him. Danzo would reveal the information of many important missions of the village to enemy villages through his spies deployed all over other nations. He wanted to weaken the power of clans through this while strengthening his route. He schemed against my parents and almost got them killed. I even suspect he relayed information related to your mission to Kumagakur, Sakumozen. What? It was Danzo who did it. Sakumo gnashes his teeth. Not only this, he even spread rumors about your failure in the village which almost lead you to commit suicide. 
Izuna continues. Sigh. Sakamo sighs and looks gratefully at Izuna. Now moving on, seeing all of his tricks and schemes fail, Danzo decided to use extreme methods. He joined hands with Orikimura and conducted various experiments on human test subjects. All of you must be aware of the information regarding missing persons spread in Kanaha. Danzo quickly suppressed the rumors with his root. Izuna throws another scroll at them. What? You mean to say that Danzo was behind all of that? How evil could a person be to commit such heinous crimes? He conducted experiments on the very villagers he swore to protect. Danzo is not a human, he is a demon in disguise. I have started to lose trust in the village. Our clan joined the village in hopes of finding a safe haven, but we never expected it to be the den of the devil. Now, I have second thoughts about staying in this place. Many clan leaders start to openly show their distrust and scorn for the deeds of the village elders. Sigh. Hiruzen took a deep breath. All of his hairs turns gray in an instant. He instantly aged ten of years as he weakly stares at the expression of various clan leaders. I have failed you, sensei. I have failed you. Your dream to create a safe haven for young children is shattering right before my eyes. I can't see this happen before my eyes. All of your hard work, blood, and sweat are tainted in my hands. Aizuna looks at their reaction and nods his head. I have successfully created a turmoil in their state of mind. Now it is time to raise the position of Uchiha clan in their heart and gain sympathy from all of them. Calm down everyone. Calm down. Aizuna raises his voice to get their attention. The worst is yet to come. All of you must have wondered what was beneath the bandaged arm of Danzo at one point or another. Yes. All of them nod their head in agreement. Swish. Aizuna takes out a shriveled white arm from a scroll. There are many closed eyes on the arm. This is. All of them frown as they scrutinize the arm. It is the right arm of Danzo. And for your information, this arm is made from Hashirama cells synthesized by Orikimuro. Aizuna drops another bomb on them. What? Hashirama cells, you mean the cells of the first Hokage? Yes, the cells of first Hokage. Danzo pilfered the grave of the first Hokage and synthesized his cells in the laboratory. Now you might be wondering, what's the deal with all those closed eyes? Aizuna slowly opens one of the eyes to show the white sclera of the eye. Fugaku frown as he notices the eye. He activates his Sherinan and closely stares at them. These are, these are Sherinans. But all of them are blind with no vision, it seems to be the effect of forbidden Jutsu Izanagi. Danzo that bastard? How many Uchiha clansmen did he murder to acquire so many Sherinans? Hayashi Hayaga activates his Byakugan to observe them. All of these eyes, they have different chakra colors. And from the look of it, this chakra color matches with Uchiha's. I have observed their chakra various times and I can't forget it this easily. He reveals the fact. What? You mean to say that all of these eyes were stolen from the Uchiha clan? Inoichi exclaims in surprise. Yes, Danzo head hunted our Uchiha clan members, and he murdered many Uchiha clan members to construct this arm. Paired with Hashirama cells, he was almost unstoppable. Aizuna takes out a small flask from his pocket. There is an eye inside the flask as it is floating in a solution. These eyes. Fugaku looks at Aizuna. These are the eyes of my ancestor Kagami Uchiha. Danzo pilfered them from his grave and replaced his right eye with them. Not only this, he even manipulated the village using the power of these eyes. He even disgraced my ancestor through the sinister use of his power. Hiruzen falls from his chair as he listens to this. Oh, my friend Kagami, I have even sinned against you and your descendants. I don't know how will I ever be able to make for it. You sacrificed your life to preserve mine and yet here am I soiling your legacy. This is not the end yet. Chapter 119, 117. Politics of the Village Part 3. This is not the end yet. Hum, you mean to say there is more. The clan leaders turn towards Aizuna. Aizuna throws another scroll towards them. All of you must be aware of the dispute at borders before the Third Ninja War. Shikaku nods his head. Yes, IWA and Kumo started the war when their shinobis infiltrated our borders and killed most of our patrol teams. In response to that attack, Hokage Sama and Danzo sent a team of Umbus to intercept the invaders. We were successful in repelling the invasion but lost many shinobis in the confrontation. He slowly explains the turn of events. Exactly. Aizuna exclaims. Shikaku frown as a pensive expression appears on his face. Isn't that normal, Aizunakan? The enemy invaded our land, so we have to intercept them. Danzo was power hungry, but he was not a fool. He won't allow Kanaha to get invaded by enemy nations. So what are you trying to say, Aizunakan? Shikakusen, you are already aware of the ambitions of Danzo, right? Shikako nods his head and replies. Hokage Sama mentioned the possibility of involvement of Danzo in his assassination attempt. But we were busy with the peace treaty with Kumagakur. So, at that time, we have to put the matter at the back of our mind. Aizunakan, you mean to say that Danzo has higher ambitions? Aizuna nods his head and explains. Danzo not only coveted the position of Hokage, he even coveted the power of Hidden Village. Danzo started this war to deal with all Hidden Villages in one fell swoop. Aizuna stops and looks at them. Shikaku frowns and question him. Why would he start a war and disrupt the peace in the village? I highly doubt Danzo would do such a reckless move unless he is sure of the outcome. There is no benefit in war, only needless causalities and waste of resources. I don't think it is valid of a reason, there must be more to the matter than it seems. Shikaku and the rest start to contemplate. Hmm. The clan leaders ponder over the matter. 
After contemplating for a while, they shook their head and turned towards Shikaku. Shikaku, you are the only person with the most gifted mind among all of us. You must have a clue regarding the situation. A slash and big brain imposter among us. Recently started playing among us. Hook me on Discord if you are interested. What a drag. Shikaku silently mutters. Aizuna hears the remark and muses. These Nara clan fellows are as lazy as usual. If not for the harsh life of the shinobi world, they would have turned into neat or geek by now. Come to think of it, I haven't gotten a chance to visit them in all these years. I will visit them when I have spare time. To think, he started a war to gain more power and control. I wonder how he planned to gain control over all hidden nations. I doubt he is strong enough to take on all nations alone. Inoichi raises a question. Yes, Konoha is strong but we aren't strong enough to engage all hidden village at the same time. Unless Danzo has developed some sort of kinjutsu, I doubt he had any chance. Hayashi speculates. He did join hands with Orikimaru, so it is quite possible. But I am still skeptical of the possibility. Shivi states his opinion. Shikaku puts his hand on his forehead and enters in deep contemplation. He ponders for a while before replying. I think I have figured out the answer. As expected of Inara, Shikaku must have figured out something. The clan leaders perks up their ear. Shikaku turns towards Aizuna and explains his speculation. To gain control over all the nations, Danzo needed a power far greater than them. Who, who? The various clan leaders nod their heads in agreement. Now there aren't many powerful things which surpass the might of the hidden villages. But, but, the tailed beast can surpass the power of a village. Hum, that makes sense. Chosa nods his head. Yes, only tailed beast possesses enough power to single-handedly annihilate a hidden village. The Nine Tails incident freshens up in their memory. Now, what if someone is able to control all the tailed beasts? Shikaku continues. The clan leaders frown as the Karama clan leader remarks. Then won't he gain enough power to rule all shinobi nations? But such a thing is impossible right? Up till now, except first Hokage Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha, no even came close to wield that amount of power. Yes, that's true. First Hokage was the god of shinobi. He single-handedly overpowered eight out of nine tailed beasts. The rest of the leaders agree with him. That's it. This is my point. What if someone possesses the power of the wood release of the first Hokage and the Sherinan of Madara Uchiha? Wouldn't he be capable of achieving the same feat? Shikaku drops a revelation on them. Wait. You mean to say that Danzo was aiming for such a thing? All of their expression turn unsightly. Shikaku points towards the shriveled hand made of Hashirama cells with many Sherinan in it. The clan leader notices the hand, and it dawns on them. Cough, cough. Let me explain. Aizuna gathers their attention. Danzo wanted to gain control of the Nine Tails and slowly take over the village. He got this idea from the fight of First Hokage and Madara Uchiha. So, when Mito Uzumaki sealed the Nine Tails inside the Kushina Uzumaki, Danzo viewed this as an opportunity. He secretly informed Kimigakura of her and then hatched a plan to kidnap her from the village. The Rudumbu secretly waited at the borders, ready to ambush Kimo ninjas and capture Kushina. But thanks to Minata-san's interference, this plan never succeeded. Come to think of it, everything adds up. But he failed in his attempt. Sakumo nods his head. Danzo attempted to capture Nine Tails several times in the future, but Minato was always present with Kushina. So, he could only give up helplessly and turn to the Uchiha clan. So, he kidnapped many Uchiha clan members during and after the war. He plucked out their Sherry Nan and created this synthetic prosthetic to strengthen himself. Aizuna continues his explanation. Hum. All of them nod their head in agreement as they listen to the explanation. But he lacked a certain thing. What? He lacked, he lacked a fully mature Mangekyo Sherry Nan to control the Nine Tails. The previously stolen eye of Kagamai Uchiha was failing. It had lost the vision and most of its visual prowess. So, Danzo needed a replacement for his right eye and so he targeted me. He lost against me and escaped the village only to return later and slaughter the Uchiha clan. Aizunakami replies to them while his eyes are seething in rage. Sigh. The clan leader sighs in relief. If Danzo would have succeeded in his ploy, then most of our clans would have to bow before him in servitude. They turn towards Aizuna in gratitude. You have our gratitude, Aizuna Uchiha. The Uchiha suffered the conspiracy of Danzo and suffered such a tragic fate. It may not amount to much compared to the loss, but we will help Uchiha clan to overcome some of its loss. The clan leader struck these a helping hand towards the Uchiha clan. Fugaku places a hand on his shoulder to calm him down. Aizuna takes a deep breath and turns towards Hiruzen. So, Hokage-sama, what's your stance on this matter? The rest of the clan leader stares at Hiruzen, waiting for his response. Hiruzen weakly stands up from his chair. One of the Umbu members supports him to stand up. He must be Kanoamura's father. I can sense a similarity in his and Hiruzen's chakra. Hiruzen takes support against the wall and replies in a weak tone. I will. I will take responsibility for all the misdeeds of Danzo and the rest of the elders. It was my incompetency that leads to such a situation, so I will resign as a hokage. Also, all the information regarding the evil deeds of Danzo excluding the involvement with other villages will be revealed to the public. So, he is still prioritizing village over anything else. I don't mind though as long as my Uchiha clan does not suffer injustice. Hiruzen turns towards Aizuna and remarks. You have opened my eyes, Aizuna Uchiha. 
From today onwards you will be excluded from the jurisdiction of the Elder Council and Hokage. You are free to take any sort of mission and no one will be able to order you around. It is my way of expressing gratitude on behalf of the village. As for the Uchiha clan, I will listen to all of their requests as long as they don't interfere with the collective interest of the village. This injustice was caused because of a lack of insight on my part. At least, I would be able to repent for some of my sins. The rest of the clan leaders agree with the notion. Kurama clan leader hesitates for a while before eventually agreeing with the decision. Aizuna turns towards Fugaku. It is your turn to speak, Fugaku-san. My task is over, I will take my leave. He signals Kakashi, Shisui, and Itaki. They follow him out. You have a fine seedling in your clan, Fugaku. I can't even imagine the extent to which the Uchiha clan will prosper in the future. With so many geniuses in your clan, it will be able to surpass its previous prestige in few more years. Hayashi sighs and enviously look at Fugaku. If only my clan wasn't restricted by the conservative thoughts of old elders. Hayashi sighs and turns his attention to the meeting. The Umbu members replace the chair and tables. Chapter 119, 117. Politics of the Village Part 3. This is not the end yet. Hum, you mean to say there is more. The clan leaders turn towards Aizuna. Aizuna throws another scroll towards them. All of you must be aware of the dispute at borders before the Third Ninja War. Shikaku nods his head. Yes, IWA and Kumo started the war when their shinobis infiltrated our borders and killed most of our patrol teams. In response to that attack, Hokage-sama and Danzo sent a team of Umbus to intercept the invaders. We were successful in repelling the invasion but lost many shinobis in the confrontation. He slowly explains the turn of events. Exactly. Aizuna exclaims. Shikaku frown as a pensive expression appears on his face. Isn't that normal, Aizunakan? The enemy invaded our land, so we have to intercept them. Danzo was power hungry, but he was not a fool. He won't allow Kanaha to get invaded by enemy nations. So what are you trying to say, Aizunakan? Shikakuzan, you are already aware of the ambitions of Danzo, right? Shikaku nods his head and replies. Hokage-sama mentioned the possibility of involvement of Danzo in his assassination attempt. But we were busy with the peace treaty with Kumagakur. So, at that time, we have to put the matter at the back of our mind. Aizunakan, you mean to say that Danzo has higher ambitions? Aizuna nods his head and explains. Danzo not only coveted the position of Hokage, he even coveted the power of Hidden Village. Danzo started this war to deal with all Hidden Villages in one fell swoop. Aizuna stops and looks at them. Shikaku frowns and question him. Why would he start a war and disrupt the peace in the village? I highly doubt Danzo would do such a reckless move unless he is sure of the outcome. There is no benefit in war, only needless causalities and waste of resources. I don't think it is valid of a reason, there must be more to the matter than it seems. Shikaku and the rest start to contemplate. Hmm. The clan leaders ponder over the matter. After contemplating for a while, they shook their head and turned towards Shikaku. Shikaku, you are the only person with the most gifted mind among all of us. You must have a clue regarding the situation. A slash and big brain imposter among us. Recently started playing among us. Hook me on Discord if you are interested. What a drag. Shikaku silently mutters. Aizuna hears the remark and muses. These Nara clan fellows are as lazy as usual. If not for the harsh life of the shinobi world, they would have turned into neat or geek by now. Come to think of it, I haven't gotten a chance to visit them in all these years. I will visit them when I have spare time. To think, he started a war to gain more power and control. I wonder how he planned to gain control over all hidden nations. I doubt he is strong enough to take on all nations alone. Inoichi raises a question. Yes, Kanaha is strong but we aren't strong enough to engage all hidden village at the same time. Unless Danzo has developed some sort of kinjutsu, I doubt he had any chance. Hayashi speculates. He did join hands with Orikimaru, so it is quite possible. But I am still skeptical of the possibility. Shivi states his opinion. Shikaku puts his hand on his forehead and enters in deep contemplation. He ponders for a while before replying. I think I have figured out the answer. As expected of Inara, Shikaku must have figured out something. The clan leaders perks up their ear. Shikaku turns towards Aizuna and explains his speculation. To gain control over all the nations, Danzo needed a power far greater than them. Who, who? The various clan leaders nod their heads in agreement. Now there aren't many powerful things which surpass the might of the hidden villages. But, but, the tailed beast can surpass the power of a village. Hum, that makes sense. Chosa nods his head. Yes, only tailed beast possesses enough power to single-handedly annihilate a hidden village. The nine tails incident freshens up in their memory. Now, what if someone is able to control all the tailed beasts? Shikaku continues. The clan leaders frown as the Karama clan leader remarks. Then won't he gain enough power to rule all shinobi nations? But such a thing is impossible right? Up till now, except first Hokage Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha, no even came close to wield that amount of power. Yes, that's true. First Hokage was the god of shinobi. He single-handedly overpowered eight out of nine-tailed beasts. The rest of the leaders agree with him. That's it. This is my point. What if someone possesses the power of the wood release of the first Hokage and the Sherinan of Madara Uchiha? Wouldn't he be capable of achieving the same feat? Shikaku drops a revelation on them. Wait. You mean to say that Danzo was aiming for such a thing? 
all of their expression turn unsightly. Shikaka points towards the shriveled hand made of Hashirama cells with many Sharinan in it. The clan leader notices the hand, and it dawns on them. Cough, cough. Let me explain. Aizuna gathers their attention. Danzo wanted to gain control of the Nine Tails and slowly take over the village. He got this idea from the fight of First Hokage and Madara Uchiha. So, when Mito Uzumaki sealed the Nine Tails inside the Kushina Uzumaki, Danzo viewed this as an opportunity. He secretly informed Kimigakura of her and then hatched a plan to kidnap her from the village. The Rudumbu secretly waited at the borders, ready to ambush Kimo ninjas and capture Kushina. But thanks to Minidasan's interference, this plan never succeeded. Come to think of it, everything adds up. But he failed in his attempt. Sakumo nods his head. Danzo attempted to capture Nine Tails several times in the future, but Minato was always present with Kushina. So, he could only give up helplessly and turn to the Uchiha clan. So, he kidnapped many Uchiha clan members during and after the war. He plucked out their Sherry Nan and created this synthetic prosthetic to strengthen himself. Aizuna continues his explanation. Hum. All of them nod their head in agreement as they listen to the explanation. But he lacked a certain thing. What? He lacked, he lacked a fully mature Mangekyo Sherry Nan to control the Nine Tails. The previously stolen eye of Kagami Uchiha was failing. It had lost the vision and most of its visual prowess. So, Danzo needed a replacement for his right eye and so he targeted me. He lost against me and escaped the village only to return later and slaughter the Uchiha clan. Aizunakami replies to them while his eyes are seething in rage. Sigh. The clan leader sighs in relief. If Danzo would have succeeded in his ploy, then most of our clans would have to bow before him in servitude. They turn towards Aizuna in gratitude. You have our gratitude, Aizuna Uchiha. The Uchihas suffered the conspiracy of Danzo and suffered such a tragic fate. It may not amount to much compared to the loss, but we will help Uchiha clan to overcome some of its loss. The clan leader struck these a helping hand towards the Uchiha clan. Fugaku places a hand on his shoulder to calm him down. Aizuna takes a deep breath and turns towards Hiruzen. So, Hokage-sama, what's your stance on this matter? The rest of the clan leader stares at Hiruzen, waiting for his response. Hiruzen weakly stands up from his chair. One of the Umbu members supports him to stand up. He must be Kanoamura's father. I can sense a similarity in his and Hiruzen's chakra. Hiruzen takes support against the wall and replies in a weak tone. I will. I will take responsibility for all the misdeeds of Danzo and the rest of the elders. It was my incompetency that leads to such a situation, so I will resign as a Hokage. Also, all the information regarding the evil deeds of Danzo excluding the involvement with other villages will be revealed to the public. So, he is still prioritizing village over anything else. I don't mind though as long as my Uchiha clan does not suffer injustice. Hiruzen turns towards Aizuna and remarks. You have opened my eyes, Aizuna Uchiha. From today onwards you will be excluded from the jurisdiction of the Elder Council and Hokage. You are free to take any sort of mission and no one will be able to order you around. It is my way of expressing gratitude on behalf of the village. As for the Uchiha clan, I will listen to all of their requests as long as they don't interfere with the collective interest of the village. This injustice was caused because of a lack of insight on my part. At least, I would be able to repent for some of my sins. The rest of the clan leaders agree with the notion. Kurama clan leader hesitates for a while before eventually agreeing with the decision. Aizuna turns towards Fugaku. It is your turn to speak, Fugakusen. My task is over, I will take my leave. He signals Kakashi, Shisui, and Itaki. They follow him out. You have a fine seedling in your clan, Fugaku. I can't even imagine the extent to which the Uchiha clan will prosper in the future. With so many geniuses in your clan, it will be able to surpass its previous prestige in few more years. Hayashi sighs and enviously look at Fugaku. If only my clan wasn't restricted by the conservative thoughts of old elders. Hayashi sighs and turns his attention to the meeting. The Umbu members replace the chair and tables. The real meeting starts now. Chapter 120, 118. Big Brother Aizuna. A month passed in the blink of an eye. The Hokage office spreads the news of the Uchiha massacre and the involvement of Danzo among the villagers. All of Danzo's misdeeds were revealed to the public. The reputation of the villager elders plummeted, and the people raised many questions. It took the Hokage office a month to calm down the villagers. Uchiha clan restored some of its lost prestige, but their power and prestige plummeted in the eyes of the civilians. The Uchiha clan moved to their old compounds inside the village. Inside the Kanaha hospital. Akira, Yagami, Aizuna, and Shisui are anxiously moving outside of the operation room. Fumiko has been pregnant for nine months and it is time for her delivery. Tsunade is taking care of the delivery together with Aiko and Shizun. Everything will be alright. Aunt Fumiko and the baby will be fine. Aizuna tries to assure them, but anxiety could be seen on his face. I trust in Tsunadison's medical proficiency. She is the best medical ninja in all villages. I am sure everything will be okay. Akira and Yagami nod their head but there is still nervousness on their face. I want a small little sister. Aizuna closes his eyes and prays silently. Creak. The door of the operating room opens up. Tsunade walks out of the room with sweat on her head. She wipes away the sweat and turns towards them. Congratulations, it was a success. Both the mother and the baby are fine. A little princess has arrived in your family. A baby girl. Akira wipes away his tear and rushes towards the room. 
Am I a father or an uncle now? Yagami questioned himself. It doesn't matter, there is a cute little daughter in our family. Yagami follows Akira. Shisui and Aizuna also rush towards the room. Please be careful. The mother is weak from the delivery, she needs plenty of rest to recover. Tsunade warns them. Shisui enters inside the room. Aizuna stops before Tsunade and bows his head. Thank you, Tsunade, for your help. I can't express my gratitude in words. Tears flow through his eyes. Tsunade shakes her head and replies. It is the least of the things I could do for you. You have helped me during thorny times and opened my eyes. Aizuna wipes his tears and enters in the room. The baby girl is wrapped in a blanket as it peacefully sleeps near Fumiko. Aizuna walks up to the baby and tickles her with his finger. Giggle, giggle. The baby giggles and grabs his finger with her small hands. Aizuna gently takes her in his arms while Akira and Yagami are conversing with Aiko and Fumiko. Shisui walks up to Aizuna and anxiously looks at the baby. Aizuna. Aizuna nai Aizen, can I hold her in my arms? I am already a big brother now, but, but she is my first little sister. I will pamper her every day. Shisui gently takes her in his arms. Aizuna walks towards Fumiko and infuses some sage chakra to rejuvenate her body. Fumiko slowly opens her eye. Aizuna turns towards his parents and asks. Mom, Dad, have you thought of a name for the baby? Aiko nods her head. I have already thought of a name for her. She is like a colorful flower which bloomed in our life during this summer. So, I will name her Ayaka. Ayaka, the colorful flower which bloomed in summer. Akira nods his head. It is the most suitable name for our little princess. Her smile will bloom happiness in our life. He wipes his tears. Yes, she is our little princess. I won't allow anyone to treat her rudely. Fumiko slowly sits up and signals to Shisui. Shisui hands over Ayaka to Fumiko. Fumiko gently caresses Ayaka. Okay, all of you Shu, Shu, get out of here. It's time to feed the baby. Aiko pushes them out from the room. All the males helplessly walk out from the room. Let's celebrate the birth of our little princess. Akira plans the celebration. Who, who? Yagami frantically nods his head. So, our Uchiha clan is finally blessed with a princess. Fugaku, Mikato, Itaki, and Suzuki walks up to them. Yay, I am big brother now. Suzuki cheers in happiness. I will check on her. Mikato enters in the room. Suzuki follows her. Itaki walks up to Shisui and Aizuna, whereas Fugaku talks with Yagami and Akira. Let's protect Ayaka together. Shisui and Itaki nod their head. They walk towards the roof. Aizuna jumps on the roof and lies down. Itaki and Shisui follow him and imitate him. What are your plans, Aizuna and Aizen? Itaki asks Aizuna. The Akatsuki got scot-free after this attack. We can't allow them to live in happiness when they killed so many of our clan members. Shisui remarks. Do you have any plan, Shisui Nai Aizen? Itaki questions him. I don't, but Aizuna and Aizen might have one. They turn towards Aizuna and waits for his response. Aizuna closes his eyes while pondering. Akatsuki is not a big problem. After mastering sage mode, I can easily solo fight against them all. The real problem is Kara. I don't know who and where are Kara members. Some of them aren't even born yet or way too unknown or hidden. I can't take a risk and engage with this Haiki without any preparation. I need powerful allies on my side whose sole purpose is to hunt Kara members. I can count on Shisui and Itaki and maybe Kakashi. But Kakashi needs to grow stronger, then only he would have a shot against them. Hmm. Maybe I will create a team of my own. I can recruit some figures who died in original Naruto and train them. This might work. I just have to figure out the people who will easily work for me. I don't want any wild card on my team. Any unstable factor can create a crack in the team and I might lose a chance against Kara. Aizuna stands up and stretches his arms. I have a plan and both of you are part of it. Aizuna turns towards Itaki and Shisui. Somewhere in Land of River. Inside a small restaurant. A group of shinobis with a headband of Land of River enters the restaurant. They rudely push a cloaked figure sitting near the entrance of the restaurant. Another smaller cloaked figure sits near the other end of the restaurant. Hey you, waiter. Bring your special dish. One of them orders. The waiter hurriedly ran towards the kitchen and bring the special dish of the restaurant. One of the jounin bites a huge chunk of meat and gulp it down in one mouthful. They start to discuss various news flying around in the shinobi world. Hey, have you heard of the recent news from Kanahagakur? The jounin gulps down another mouthful of meat and question his friends. What's so special about it? Is there another rumor from the so-called hidden villages? They are always trying to spread their propaganda of peace and exploit us small nations. Another jounin shakes his head. No, it's not about that. The first jounin shakes his head in denial. Then what it is? One of the jounin asks him curiously while gulping a mouthful of sake. Waiter, bring me another bottle of sake. He yells at the waiter. The first jounin signals them to come closer as he whispers. Apparently, one of the most powerful clans of Kanaha, the Uchiha clan, was massacred by one of the elders of Kanaha. What? They exclaim in surprise. SHH. The jounin silences them. Such a thing happened in one of the hidden village. We won't believe it if someone else mentioned it to me. Other jounins replies. The jounin nods his head and continues. Not only that, he even succeeded in the massacre, but Aizuna Uchiha also is known as the Silent Shinigami arrived in the village. He quickly dealt with the elder and killed him. Wow, Silent Shinigami. Isn't that the person with one of the highest bounty on his head in the bingo book? 
Another Jounin remark. Yes, he is the one. Not only he killed the elder, he even killed another mercenary of the criminal organization Akatsuki. What was his name again? The Jounin tries to recall the incident. He strains his memory to recall the name of the Akatsuki fellow. The smaller cloaked figure attentively listens to their conversation as he mutters to himself. I have yet to find any trace of that bastard father of mine. He ra asterisk ed my mother and left her to die, but she survived and gave birth to me, only to die shortly after. From then onwards, I decided to hunt down that bastard father of mine. Mother only gave me one name for father the bloody Dino. I recalled it. The Jounin yells in exclamation. He is quite a famous killer who murdered various small villages and is quite a psychopath. He is the bloody Dino. The silent Shinigami executed him. The Jounin describes identity. What? The small cloaked figure stands up. He turns towards the group of shinobis and questions them. What did you say? Who was it again? The small cloaked figure yells at them in anxiety. The group frowns and turns towards the small cloaked figure. Hey, kid. You better watch your mouth. Don't try to test our patience, or we will. The Jounin makes a throat slitting action. I said, who is the killer? Answer me. The small cloaked figure yells at them. I don't care. Just get rid of him. He is being a nuisance to my meal. One of the Jounin lazily signals his teammates. Flick, flick. One of the ninjas licks his kunao and dash towards the small cloaked figure. Just die, you bastard. He yells at the figure. Stab. A sharp black metallic rod pierces through the ninja. Gufa. The shinobi pukes out a mouthful of blood and drops in his own pool of blood. This bastard? Kill him, he murdered Kyosuk. The ninjas attack the cloaked figure. Clank, clank. They engage in heated combat with the small cloaked figure. The waiter and the restaurant owner immediately runs out of the restaurant. Plop, plop. Plop. One by one, the dead bodies of the ninjas fell on ground stacked on top of each other. Huff. Huff. The small cloaked figure breathes heavily, but there is a creepy smile on his face. He slowly walks towards the large cloaked figure who hasn't moved an inch from his spot and is still drinking juice. Clang. The small cloaked figure attacks the large cloaked figure, but he blocks the attack. Quite an interesting power, you have here. The large cloaked figure muses. It is none of your damn business. I will kill you. The small cloaked figure attacks again, but the large cloaked figure easily overpowers him. I can see the potential in you, kid. Want to work for me? The cloaked figure questions him. Will you help me get my revenge? The small cloaked figure questions. No, I won't. The small cloaked figure turns around and walks away. Then I don't see any benefit in working for you. I won't help you directly, but I will make you strong enough to do it with your own hands. The large cloaked figure finishes his sentence. Deepa. Huh. The large cloaked figure frowns. My name is Deepa and I will work for you. The small cloaked figure removes the cloak to reveal his clock. Oh, a kid. That's unexpected. The large cloaked figure removes his cloak and shakes hand with the kid. Nice to meet you, kid. My name is Amato. A slash N. Here we are in a new arc. Comment down your thoughts below on this chapter. Should we create a team with some legendary shinobis banded together or you want Izuna to be the lone wolf? Chapter 121, 119. Beatdown. Huff. Huff. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. Itaka makes some hand signs and spews out a large fireball. He takes out a kunao from his holster and throws it together with the fireball. Wind style, great wind breakthrough. Shisui makes some hand signs and enhances the fireball with his wind jutsu. It is still not enough. Shuriken jutsu, lightning style, phoenix sage purple lightning assault. Shisui infuses purple lightning through three shurikens and forms a lightning bolt. The purple lightning bolt shoots forward and circles around the fireball. Cooperation ninjutsu, lightning overload. The cooperation jutsu of Shisui and Itaka smashes into Izuna. Izuna coats his hand with darkness chakra and blocks the attack. Skid. The attack pushes him back. Sizzle. Smoke rises from Izuna's hand and he gets some burn marks on his hand. They have improved a lot in this period. But where is Kakashi? He must have hidden somewhere nearby. In terms of firepower, talent, and chakra reserves, Shisui and Itaka surpass Kakashi. But Kakashi outshines them in terms of patience, wits, and ninja tactics. He always looks for the ideal window to deal a deadly strike and end the enemy in one fatal blow. Rumble, rumble. The ground beneath Izuna trembles and collapses. A large pit with many earth spikes appears beneath the ground. He would have to do something better to land a hit on me. Izuna jumps in the air and avoids the trap. Swish, swish. Many sharp wires wrap around him. Fire style, Phoenix fire flames. Itaka channels fire chakra through the wires. The flame engulfs Izuna. Crunch, crunch. Izuna's figure shatters into many fragments of light and appears in front of Itake. Bam. He lands a kick on Itake. Itake blocks the kick with his arms, but the kick is followed by a punch to the gut. Ugh. The punch lands squarely in his gut and sends him flying. Finally, I can join the fight. Dynamic entry. Mike Guy jumps in the air and performs a somersault to build the momentum. He performs a jump kick and directs it at Izuna's face. Bam. Izuna blocks the kick with his arm. Mike Guy performs a backflip and dash towards Izuna. First gate. Second gate. Third gate. Fourth gate. Fifth gate. Open. Mike Guy's skin turns red and a green aura forms around him. Swoosh. 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 Guy runs around Izuna in a circle to search for an opening. 
Oi, oi, guy, it is a spar, not a fight. Why are you using eight gates in the spar? Aizuna takes a Taijutsu stance and follows Guy's movements. Be it a fight or a spar, I will always give my 100% because that's the spirit of youth. Then don't mind me doing the same. Aizuna chuckles and crosses his arms. First gate. Second gate. Third gate. Open. Aizuna opens three gates and engages in a Taijutsu battle with Might Guy. Bang, bang, bang. Multiple shockwaves spread through the air as both of them trade blows. Bam, bam, bam. The ground beneath them breaks apart as multiple crater forms. Sorry, guy, but I have a natural advantage against you. My natural perception is higher than you. Bam. Aizuna punches Might Guy in the gut. Violent leaf adamantine strength whirlwind. Aizuna performs a severe roundhouse kick and sends Might Guy flying. Boom. Might Guy crashes into a large boulder and blows it into smithereens. I am not done yet. Might Guy jumps out from the dust and dashes towards Aizuna. This is the chance. We have to create an opening for Guy. Ninjutsu techniques are quite slow, and Aizuna can dodge them easily. But Guy's Taijutsu is different. If we can distract Aizuna for a while then Guy will be able to finish him off. Kakashi signals Itaki and Shisui. Yes, Captain. Three of them dash towards Aizuna. All three of them activate their Sharinan. Fire style, Crimson Phoenix fire bullet. Itaki infuses a large amount of chakra and fires a gigantic Crimson Phoenix at Aizuna. Wind style, spiraling vacuum gale. Shisui launches a wind jutsu in combination with the fire jutsu. Shadow body flicker, quadruple body clone. Swish, swish. He flickers and disappears as multiple after images follow him. Don't leave me out of the fray. Kakashi follows them and draws out a kunao and gathers lightning chakra in his hand. Lightning release, purple lightning flare. Bam, bam, bam. The three jutsu slams in Aizuna who barely dodges them. Oi, oi, cut me some slack all right. I have a handicap in this fight. Do all of you want to beat me this badly? Aizuna frantically escapes their attack. Yes, we won't relax until we beat you to the pulp. All of them speak in unison. Aizuna sweat drops at their remark. Leaf village secret technique, turbulent trinity heavenly slash. The three of them combine hands and launch a volley of attacks at Aizuna. Damn, these three are eager to beat me to death. Come on, guys. It is just a spar, don't be so mean to me. Aizuna dodges their attack while keeping an eye for any surprise attacks. Fwoosh, fwoosh, fwoosh. Shisui, Itaki, and Kakashi grab his arms and legs. Do it, guy. We won't be able to hold him for too long. Kakashi yells at guy. Sniff, sniff. Guy sniffs as tears and snot flow through his eyes and nose. Everyone, I won't disappoint your trust and belief in me. I will give my all and overcome this difficult situation. This hurdle, I will blast it away with my youth. Guy clenches his fist and crosses his arms. Huh? Kakashi Zenpai, what's he talking about? We have to just beat Aizen and Aizen. Shisui questioned Kakashi in confusion. Sigh. This guy, he is always like that. He is too passionate for his own good. Boom. A burst of shockwaves travels across them. A dense green aura surrounds Guy as debris and dust rise in the air. Sixth gate. Gate of view. Open. Ha. Guy yells loudly and dashes towards them. My passion and youth will fuel my will for victory. Ha. Morning peacock. Guy rapidly punches the air and releases a barrage of punches at them. The sheer speed and friction set his fists on fire and release a blaze of fireballs. Oi, Guy, we are also in the range of this attack. Guy collapses on the ground and raises his hand and gives thumbs up to them. I did it, guys. Pooh. He faints and face palms on the ground. Sorry guys, not today. I don't want to get torched. Maybe next time. Aizuna grins at them. Fourth gate, gate of pain. Open. Aizuna opens the fourth gate and spins. Kakashi, Guy, and Itaka tightly held on to him. Damn it. Just this time, we almost got him. Shisui yells in frustration. Leaf whirlwind. Aizuna performs a roundhouse spin and throws them towards the morning peacock. Boom. Boom. The fireballs land on them and all of them fall on the ground. Smoke rises from their body and they angrily stare at Guy. Damn it Guy. Just you wait. Ugh. 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 Three of them collapse on the ground and faints. Sigh. They almost got me. It wasn't a wise choice to give them a handicap. Aizuna heals them with his medical ninjutsu and rejuvenates with nature energy. They have improved tremendously in these past six months. At this rate, they will overpower me in few more days with the handicap. Sigh. Tsunade left the village with Shizun. It has been six months since Ayaka came to this world. Tsunade left for the land of medicine half a year ago. I have nothing left to do in this period. Zzzzz. Youth. Zzzzz. Youth. Snoring sounds interrupts his thoughts. Guy is snoring while sleeping. Does he always sleep like that? Shadow clone jutsu. Aizuna makes four shadow clones and picks them up. Carry them to Kanaha Hospital. They just need some rest. The clones flicker towards the Kanaha hospital. He lies down on the ground and recalls the terms of their fight. Flashback no jutsu. Aizuna, Kakashi, Shisui, and Itaki are walking towards the training ground. Shisui turns towards Aizuna and folds his arms in annoyance. It's not fair. Nyaizen. You always beat us like a rag doll and then train us to death. But, Shisui, I always heal you using medical ninjutsu, so you can continue your training without any problem, Aizuna replies to him. 
But, but Nyizen, this is torturous too much for us. Nowadays, the Umbu missions feel more like a break than an actual mission. But sadly, they aren't requested that often. Shisui sighs in annoyance. So, what's the solution? Do you have any idea? Aizuna questions him. Hum. The gang ponders for a solution. I have an idea. Kakashi snaps his finger. What it is? Captain Kakashi. Shisui asks Kakashi. Itaka silently listens to them. Kakashi turns towards Aizuna and suggests. Let the three of us spar with you, while you have a handicap. In our spar, you won't use any ninjutsu, funjutsu, senjutsu to attack us, not even your sherinan. You can only use teijutsu to fight back though you can use ninjutsu to defend yourself. Shisui and Itaki immediately agrees. This is a good suggestion. We agree with you, Captain Kakashi. At least, this way I will be able to beat up Nyaizen and soothe my sore heart. Shisui silently murmurs to himself. I can hear your inner thoughts, Shisui. Aizuna sweat drops at Shisui's thoughts. Did I hear teijutsu and training? A raspy voice interrupts them. Might Guy walk towards them on his hands. Guy, what are you doing? Kakashi questioned Guy. Oh, it's nothing but the passionate training of youth. My young heart is brimming with lots of energy, ready to explode. Youth. Guy does some push-ups. Guy flashes a smile with his sparkling teeth, which almost blinds the entire gang. I heard all of you are training. Can I join your passionate session of training and youth? You are welcome to join our training. I will spar with Kakashi, Shisui, and Itaki using only Teijutsu. Oh, is that so? Then the green beast of Konoha shall join your training. It has been a while since I last spar with you. Aizuna. Flashback ends. Aizuna carries all of them to the hospital and admits them. Naruto and Suzuki joined the academy. Ayako is too small to play with. Maybe, I should check on Tsunade during this time. Chapter 122, 120. Nakazura Group. Aizuna walks up to the Hokage Monument and sat on top of third Hokage's head. I am pretty bored these days. Aizuna flips open a soda can and drink it. Gulp, gulp. This taste is bland and so-so. At this point, I can't even remember the taste of Coca-Cola. Maybe I should pay a visit to the land of honey in my spare time. I heard their beverages are pretty good. Aizuna crushes the can and throws it in the air. The can levitate around him. Magnet release is pretty dope. But it lacks the power to do any decent damage. I have to learn its advanced version if I want to use it super effectively rather than manipulating some dust or metal chunk as a medium. The image of Magneto controlling the entire electromagnetic field pops up in his mind. I wonder if I can develop it to such a stage. Kekiai Tota is a combination of three nature transformations, and Kekiai Mora is a technique that involves five or more nature transformations. Kekiai Mora is out of the question for now. I need to have Rinnegan or Six Path Sage Mode to tap into its power. But what comes before Kekai Mora and after Kekai Tota? I have no clue about it. If I see it as a nature transformation then it should involve four different nature transformations. That shit is quite hard and almost impossible to pull off if you don't have any cheat. But lucky for me, I am a cheat. I have to just figure out a way to use it and master it. Sigh. I may have grown strong, but any Atsutsuki can use a Kekiai Mora and just erase from my existence with a simple touch. Damn, those truth-seeking balls are too much of a cheat. Aizuna closes his eyes while planning for his future power-up. If only I had Rinnegan. Should I steal it from Nagato? No. Aizuna immediately denies this option. There is so much hate to build upon those eyes. Yawn. Aizuna stands up and stretches his arms. Guess I will check on Tsunade then. It has been a while since I last saw her. The boys will take at least three more days to recover from the previous fight. I should drop by Tsunade and say hello. Aizuna closes his eyes and senses the space coordinates of his flying thunder god seal. Found her. I want to give her a surprise. So, I will teleport some distance away from her location. Whoosh. Aizuna disappears from his position and reappears inside a forest. This flying thunder god feels like a watered-down version of instant transmission of Dragon Ball. I have improved it over the years, allowing me to teleport a distance away from the target, but I still need my chakra-infused seal to sense the location. I have to improve my understanding of space to further remove the conditions of this jutsu. Aizuna slowly walks towards Tsunade's location. He takes out a premium wine from his storage scroll. She will like this wine. I will give it as a gift to her. He pockets the scroll and continues to move towards the inn. Russell. Russell. A nearby bush rustles a little as a silent breeze passes by. Aizuna ignores the rustle and continues to move forward. Rustle. Rustle. Another shrub rustles, but Aizuna continues to walk towards the inn, ignoring them. A few minutes earlier. Swish. Swish. A group of five ninjas rushes toward the nearby tiny village. They haven't gone too far. We can still catch them. One ninja reminds others. This time we will be able to hunt him down and earn quite a bounty. The rakage's head ain't cheap, at least we can sell him to other nations and reap around a billion ryo. Another ninja rubs his hand in excitement. Humph. Another ninja scoffs at the previous ninja. Your brain is small, just like your little brother, Rimushi. Hey, that's rude. Don't make fun of my size. You aren't packing a bazooka yourself, so stop bitching around. Rimushi counterattacks. Shut up, you both. We have an urgent mission to complete. The target is Rakage. He won't go down that easily besides other ninja are guarding him. Lucky for us, he will slowly die on his own. 
We have to just wait and retrieve his corpse. Haimushi, the leader of the group, chides them. Yes, our Nakazura group lost its base of operation after our village was annihilated by Kumagakur. We have to act as a mercenary organization and take commissions from other villages. Lucky for us, this mission leads us to wreckage of Kumagakur. We can complete the commission and take revenge for our village. Thus, killing two birds with one stone. Another ninja laughs in excitement. SHHH. Haimushi gestures to them to maintain silence. If we do it correctly, we can kill three birds in a stone. He whispers to his team and points towards Aizuna, who just walked from the deeper part of the forest. Do you recognize him? Haimushi question his team. Isn't he silent Shinigami of the leaf? What's he doing here? Rimushi tilts his head in confusion. Rimushi, you idiot. It doesn't matter what he is doing here. If we can take him down before fetching Reikage's corpse we will earn double the amount of money. The bounty on silent Shinigami's head is worth 400 million Ryo. The first ninja rebukes Rimushi. But would we able to take him down? Another shinobi questions. We should be able to. Look at the situation, even Reikage is running away from us. This silent Shinigami is just a Jounin of Kanahagakur. We can take him down. The third ninja explains the situation. I know little, but if you think so, then let's headhunt him. Rimushi tilts his head in confusion. Rimushi, release the exploding insect larvae. Let him inhale death. Later we will engage in a fight against him and force him to infuse chakra to speed up the growth of explosion. Haimushi formulates a plan. As you wish, Captain. Rimushi makes some hand signs and releases microsized particles towards Aizuna. Aizuna senses the presence of stalkers, but he ignores them. There are a total of five of them. I don't why they are stalking me, but their intentions are far from friendly. I will allow them to make their move first, this way I can learn more Kekai Jenkai techniques, albeit if they have any. It would be too boring to end them this early. Whoosh. A gentle breeze passes by and Aizuna's long hairs flutter in the wind. Have they made their move? But I felt nothing. Aizuna carefully inspects his body. He feels an itching sensation in the nose. What's this? Did I inhale something? My body has grown sensitive to any change occurring inside it due to my senjutsu training. Did I inhale a poison? But I can't feel anything. Let me activate my Sherinan to inspect it. Aizuna activates his Sherinan and uses the Eye of Insight to look around. This. He spots various small microscopic particles hovering around him. Aizuna magnifies the particles and spots various microscopic insect larvae trying to invade his body. Damn, they have to choose the insect, of all things. I really hate these insects. One Abarame clan is enough. Lightning release, purple lightning flare. Aizuna infuses lightning chakra in his palm to generate purple lightning. The purple lightning incinerates all microscopic larvae. Throb, throb. Aizuna feels a throbbing sensation in his chest. He checks his body and notices a lump of larvae insects clumped up in his lungs. Fuck. I inhaled them and now they are sucking my chakra. He turns towards Sin Seal and mocks it. One sucker is enough. Now you won't allow them to take your position right. Bzzzt. Dark black lightning sparks from the Sin Seal as it angrily responds to Aizuna's mockery. The dark black lightning crawls through Aizuna's nerves and enters inside his lungs. Bzzzz. The dark lightning incinerates all intruder larvae and Aizuna exhales a turbid black smoke from his mouth. Now I need to brush my teeth. This smell of fried worms is choking me. The Nakazura group notices Aizuna using a lightning jutsu. Rimushi frowns and turns towards Haimushi. Leader, I have lost contact with all my larvae. I think. I think, he discovered them and, and killed them with his lightning jutsu. What? He detected them and even got rid of them. Damn, we have to kill him faster or else it will reveal our secret technique to the rest of the world. Haimushi immediately signals his team. Fwoosh. Fwoosh. The Nakazura group turns into smoke and surrounds Aizuna. Silent Shinigami? Today we will claim your head as a bonus with Reikage. Swoosh. Swoosh. All of them reappear before Aizuna. One of the ninjas makes some hand sign and release a blinding flash of light to disrupt Aizuna's vision. The rest of the members turn into smoke and disperse in the surrounding area. Chapter 123, 121. This is heaven. Huh? Who are you guys? Aizuna tilts his head in confusion and looks at them. We have no homeland nor a master. People seek us out, and we fulfill their wishes. The group starts their monologue. So, you bunch are mercenary ninjas. Aizuna looks at them prancing around. I can see you all right. There is no need to jump around here and there. Your technique can't hide you from my Sherinan. Aizuna spots five mercenary ninjas wearing sashes that resembled the tails of monkeys. They had painted faces and wore outfits that stripes on one side, while the other stripe had a solid color. Is this a Dragon Ball reference? Why all of them look like a bunch of Sun with all that tail and color strips? We are the wandering phantoms of the forest. The bunch of mercenary ninjas continues their introduction. I had enough of your bullshit. Lightning release, Chidori Senbon. Aizuna fires multiple Chidori Senbons at them. Whoosh whoosh, whoosh. Multiple Senbons pierces through the smoke, dispersing it in the process. Hiding in water one of the ninjas appears from a puddle of water near Aizuna. Hiding in shadow another member pops out from the shadow of water member. Hiding in fire another ninja appears in a swathe of flames. Don't leave me behind. Rimushi jumps down from a tree. Silent Shinigami, this is the end. Haimushi tunnels out from earth. Are they pretending or something? 
Aizuna tilts his head in confusion. Now explode. Rimushi makes some hand signs to blow Aizuna. Nothing happens. Rimushi makes more hand signs. Explode. Still, nothing happens. Aizuna silently stares at them. They are depleting my brain cells. If I wasted even a second with them, I will turn into a retard because of these clowns. Jinjutsu, Sherinan. Aizuna casts a powerful Jinjutsu on them and restrains them. He reads their memories. Interesting, these bunch of clown made the unruly A of Kumagakura run for his money. They have stolen some kind of secret jutsu from Kumagakur. Aizuna searches their body and finds a sealed scroll. Release. He removes the seal from the scroll and checks its contents. Hmm, secrets of black lightning. No wonder Kumagakur is so desperate to retrieve this scroll. Aizuna rolls the scroll and pocket it. I don't have any need for this scroll since I already mastered black lightning. But I can use this scroll to make him fork out some resources. I am planning on forming an organization after all. I need lots of resources in the process. Kumo is quite rich with that haul they made after the second shinobi war. Arg. Aizuna hears a groan and notices the members of the Nakazura group. They are not pleasing to the eye, but I can trade them with Kumo. Aizuna walks up to them and places his hand in front of them. Kamui. He seals their chakra and sucks them in his alternate dimension. Fufu, Fufu. Aizuna whistles and walks towards Tsunade's direction. Inside a gambling den. All right. Place your bets. The dealer hypes up the crowd. Even. 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 Three people bets on even. Odd. Tsunade forks out a million ryo from her purse and slaps them on the table. But, but Tsunade Asama, that's our last sum of money. We won't be able to afford the inn and food expenditure after you lose it in gambling. Shizun tries to convince Tsunade nervously. It's fine, it's fine. Tsunade waves her palm and continues the bet. The dealer places two dices in a cup and shakes it vigorously before rolling. It's even ladies and gentlemen. The dealer shouts in excitement. I lost. Tsunade hangs down her head and depressingly forks out the money. But, but Tsunade Asama, they are obviously cheating. The dealer is in cahoots with these people. Shizun flusters while pointing at the people. What are you talking about, Ajausama? Honesty is our policy. We won't rip off our customers. The dealer turns serious. But, earlier I saw you rigging with the dice. Shizun retorts. It's fine, Shizun. Let's get back to the inn. Tsunade walks out of the gambling den. Hi, Tsunade Asama. Shizun picks up a pink piglet and hurriedly follows Tsunade. Wait for me, Tsunade Asama. Thanks for your patronage. Thanks for your patronage. Later, inside the inn. That was a refreshing bath. Tsunade fills a cup with sake and chugs it down. Gulp, gulp. Ha. The taste of sake never turns old. But I would prefer Aizuna's special wine imported from the land of honey. Tsunade Asama, what on earth are you doing? You can't go into debt to make more money anymore. Shizun yells at Tsunade. Oink, oink. The pink piglet squeals with her. It's fine, it's fine. I can always borrow some money from Aizuna. He won't say no to me. Tsunade waves her hand. Well, that is true. Shizun drops down her head. Yo, did someone mention me? Aizuna hangs upside down from the window right in front of Tsunade. Slam. Tsunade immediately closes the window. What was that? I think I saw a ghost for a while. Tsunade mutters to herself. Tsunade, I won't lend you any more money. Swish, slam. Tsunade immediately opens up the window. I was. I was just joking. Aizuna, don't take it to heart. Come inside. Tsunade gestures to Aizuna. Aizuna enters the room and looks at Tsunade. You reek of alcohol. Aizuna pinches his nose. Yes, Aizuna. Tsunade Asama has been chugging down sake for a while now. Hick. It's fine. Let's celebrate Aizunakan. Where is my gift? I want to see it. Tsunade stretches out her hand. Sigh. Aizuna sighs and forks out the premium wine bottle. It is the last one in my collection. I have to visit the land of honey to restock. So, don't drink too much. All right. All right. I heard you. Tsunade pours out a cup from the bottle and chugs it down. Gulp, gulp. Haya. Nothing beats the taste of this wine. Aizuna ignores Tsunade and looks at Shizun. Shizun, how is your training going on? I have learned and progressed a lot in these few months. It's a hard task to become the successor of one of the legendary Sunin after all. Shizun sighs. Oink, oink. The pink piglet jumps out from her lap. Oh, is this our dinner, Shizun? It looks quite juicy. Aizuna looks at the pink piglet and takes out a fork and knife from his storage scroll. It will take me a few minutes to make a delicious dish out of it. I have all the ingredients ready with me. Aizuna takes out all the ingredients with pepper, salt, and cumin. Oink, oink. The pink piglet squeals in fear and hide behind Shizun. Gulp. Tsunade wipes drool from her mouth and gulps. It will be a fine dish if you are the one making it Aizunakan. I really like your boar dish. Tsunade looks at the pork. Oink, oink, oink. The pink piglet squeals even more and hides in a closet. Stop joking around you two. Tauntan is not food. Shizun rebukes them. Oh, such a waste of a fine ingredient. Aizuna places all the ingredients back into his storage scroll. He turns towards Shizun and questions her. Where did you find this pink piglet? Tauntan is a gift from the Lady of Land of Medicine's daimyo. Tsunadison cured her severe illness and as gratitude, she rewarded us with 50 million ryo and Tauntan. Shizun picks up the still cowering pig in her arms. Sigh. Tsunadasama lost all that money in gambling. 
We are almost broke again. Shizun narrates her experience with Aizuna. It's fine, Shizun. You had it hard. Aizuna pats Shizun's back. Let me book another room in this inn. We will travel together for the next couple of days. Aizuna informs Shizun and starts to walk out of the room. Thunk. Thunk. Aizuna feels a pull on his clothes. He turns around and notices Tsunade pulling his clothes. Hick. Don't go, Aizuna. Stay with me. Swish. Tsunade applies some force and pulls Aizuna in her embrace. Boing, boing. Her massive jugs jiggle. She hugs him tightly and presses his head in her chest. Squish. Squish. Aizuna is pressed in between her massive jugs. Don't, don't leave me alone. Tsunade murmur before hugging him tightly. Ha. Huh, I can't even complain, can I? I guess I will enjoy this feeling. Aizuna stops resisting, and Tsunade falls asleep while hugging him tightly. Aizuna slowly turns to Shizun and asks her. Did something happen recently? Tsunade looks a tad bit sad. Shizun nods her slowly before replying. The Lady of Land of Medicine's Daimyo had a similar past to Tsunade-sama. She too lost her brother and lover in the past. Due to political circumstances, her family forced her to marry the Daimyo. This reminded Tsunade-sama of her past and her mood was a little off in these past few days. Shizun narrates the story of Lady Daimyo. So, that's the reason behind her gloomy mood. Thank God, I met her on time. MMM, don't leave me alone, Aizuna. Tsunade mumbles in her sleep. Sigh. Aizuna sighs and helplessly looks at Shizun. It can't be helped. Aizuna you sleep in this corner with Tsunade-sama, I will sleep in the other corner. Shizun prepares the bed. Knock. Knock. Someone knocks on the door of their room. Aizuna raises his head and activates his X-ray vision. It's the rakage, eh damn? He is disturbing my pleasant time. Aizuna makes some hand signs and places a silencing seal in the room. The noise of the knocking dies down. Let me throw some reinforcement seals in the mix. That A is hot-blooded. He won't hesitate to barge in through the wall. Aizuna places a bunch of reinforcement seals around the room and makes it as strong as a castle wall. Now, no one will disturb us. Shizun raises her head and question Aizuna. What was that Aizunakan? Someone is knocking on the door. It's nothing Shizun. The debt collectors are chasing after Tsunade. I have placed some seals to keep them at bay. They won't disturb us anymore. Aizuna replies to her. Thank you, Aizuna. That's a relief to hear. Shizun rolls over her blanket and falls asleep. Aizuna also falls asleep while pressed in between two giant mounds. This is heaven. Chapter 124, 122, A Bet. Next morning, Aizuna wakes up. He groggily opens his eyes and looks around. He recalls yesterday's event and turns towards Tsunade. Tsunade is hugging his left arm while sleeping soundly. Zzz, I need some booze. Shizun, give me some booze. Tsunade sleep talks. Yes, yes. Tsunade-sama. Shizun opens her eyes and stretches her arms. Aizuna speechlessly looks at them. Is this their usual sleep routine? Shizun hurriedly stands up and runs towards the door. I need to order breakfast for Tsunade-sama. As if recalling something, she pauses and turns towards Aizuna. Is. Aizuna? Can. Can you lend me some money for breakfast? Tsunade-sama spent all of her money yesterday and we don't have money for breakfast. Sigh. Aizuna rubs his forehead and looks at Tsunade. This woman. He forks out some Ryo notes and hands them to Shizun. Shizun, go and get our breakfast. I will wake her up. Shizun nods her head and approaches the door. Oink. Oink. Tonton follows her. She is still traumatized by Aizuna's joke. Shizun opens up the door and slowly exits the room. Aizuna shakes Tsunade. Wake up, Tsunade. Wake up. He shakes Tsunade. Tsunade refuses to budge from her place. Tsunade wakes up or you won't get any booze. Aizuna plays his trump card. No. No. I am awake. Tsunade immediately sits up. Where is my booze? She demands Aizuna. That is. Kaya. Oink. A scream and squeal interrupt them. Aizuna immediately stands up and dashes towards the scream. That's Shizun's scream. Tsunade also stands up and follows him. Outside the entrance. They notice a trembling Shizun and Tonton who are staring at A. A has dead fish eyes with big dark bags under his eyes. His brows are twitching and his hairs are a mess. You finally opened the door. A yell in his hoarse voice. There are various fist-sized holes on the wall and door of the room. A's hands are trembling and he is staggering. Bam. A face plants on the ground and faints. Reikage-sama. Reikage-sama, are you okay, Reikage-sama? One of Reikage's bodyguards shakes him. He is completely fine. He is just exhausted because of sleep deprivation. Just allow him to rest for an hour or two. Aizuna walks away from Reikage's unconscious body. Reikage's bodyguard raises his head and notices Aizuna. He immediately puts guard against him. You don't have to worry. If I wanted to kill him, then him being awake or unconscious won't make any difference. Regardless of the situation, he would get a certain death. Aizuna ignores the bodyguard and walks away. Tsunade and Shizun follow him. I am hungry. Let's eat some breakfast. You bastard. Don't underestimate us, Kumo ninjas. Silent Shinigami or not. The Kumo ninja takes out a kunao and runs towards Aizuna. Huh? Aizuna turns around and activates his Sherinan. Jinjutsu, Sherinan. The Kumo ninja's body paralyzes, and he stops midair. Bam. He feels on the floor and angrily stares at Aizuna. Please forgive him for his rudeness. Another ninja immediately bows his head to Aizuna and begs him. 
You better tell your subordinate, there are some people he can't mess with. Aizuna deactivates his Sherinan and turns to Tsunade. Let's go. The Kumo Ninja wipes the cold sweat from his forehead and turns towards his partner. He makes some hand signs and dispels the Genjutsu. Am I, why you apologized to that Kanaha bastard? As an elite Kumo Ninja, how can you neglect your pride so easily? He questions Amai. Smack. Amai slaps him and answers. Wake up, Togai. You don't know the full extent of his prowess. What's so special about him? He just made a name for himself during the Third Ninja War. Togai sobers up. Togai, three years ago during our peace treaty with Kanaha, Reikijsama planned to capture the Byakugan during this opportunity. Amai explains to him. Uhu, I know about that. But sadly, we failed to get our hands on it. Togai shakes his head in frustration. No Togai, you don't know the entire event because Reikijsama suppressed the news. Let me tell you, since you are one of his bodyguards, we had to pay a price to get away from the situation. It was during that time, the silent Shinigami of the Leaf engaged in combat against our forces. He single-handedly faced against 50 of our elite ninja. It wasn't a fight, it was a slaughter. He killed all of them in just under a minute. Togai gulps his saliva as he looks at Amai in disbelief. It can't be true, right? There is no way such a terrifying ninja exists in the Leaf village. Amai shakes his head and continues. It is the truth, that's the terrifying power of Shinigami. Not even our third Reikijsama was capable of such a feat I was a part of that mission. He spared me and Reikijsama because he did not want to start a war with Kumagakur by assassinating Reikijsama. Amai turns towards Togai and rebukes him. Don't be too rash next time. Tsunade of the Leaf is our only hope if we want to save Kare. Take Reikijsama to our inn. Meanwhile, I will search for Tsunade and beg for help. Amai flickers out of the inn. Togai picks up A and enters another room. He slowly places A on the bed and wipes his sweat. Thankfully, he didn't kill me. I thought I was about to die there. But what was the deal with all those green creatures? What sort of genjutsu was that? Aizuna, Tsunade, Shizun, and Tantan ate their breakfast. I want to gamble, Tsunade yells in frustration. Do you have the money? Aizuna questions Tsunade. I don't. But you will pay for me right. Tsunade smirks at Aizuna. And why would I do that? Aizuna tilts his head. Because as my favorite apprentice and as a man, it is your responsibility to pay for a woman's needs. Tsunade smiles at Aizuna. What's gambling had to do with your needs? I can pay for your booze but not gambling. Aizuna rubs his forehead. Okay, let's drink booze. You said you will pay for it, right? Tsunade laughs at him. I fell for your trap. Aizuna sighs and follows her. Hick, booze is the best thing in the morning. Tsunade chugs down another cup of sake. It is noon already, Shizun replies to her. Now, now, just ignore such minor details. Tsunade waves her hand and gulps down another mouthful of sake. Aizuna lazily lies against a wall and drinks a can of cola. Creek. One of the Kumo ninjas opens up the door and enters the inn. You are one of the legendary sunin of the village hidden in the leaves. Lady Tsunade, I have sought you out to make a request. He bows before Tsunade. Hick, who are you? Tsunade questions him. Yes, I am Amai, a shinobi of the hidden cloud village. Amai bows before Tsunade. Shu, shu. Tsunade waves her hand at him. If your comrade is hurt, then you heal him. The situation is behind my skills, please save our comrade. Amai pleads to Tsunade. You tried to steal the Hayagazbia Kogan. Now you want to seek help from me. Tsunade rebukes him. That was settled between the two villages. Our Kumagakur suffered huge losses in that incident. Amai replies to her. I never expected her to listen willingly. Looks like I have to. A barge in the room. You have to what? Aizuna raises his voice and stares at A. Gulp. A swallows his next words and turns to Tsunade. Heal Kare and we will pay suitable compensation to you once our backup arrives. A tones down his voice and requests Tsunade. Well, now. So the big shots waltzed in. Do you think I need your compensation? Tsunade raises her eyebrow and smirks at A. You don't. A reply in a bland voice. I have to somehow convince her to treat Kare. I can't use force here, Shinigami is with her. I have to think of a way. A churns the gears of his brain. Found it. Tsunade likes to gamble, but she always loses the bet. If I can make a bet with her and win it, then I will be able to save Kare without suffering any loss. That's it. He turns towards Tsunade. How about we make a bet? If you lose the bet, then you will have to heal Kare. If you win, you are free to leave. A try to entice Tsunade in accepting the bet. Hick. Hum, it sounds interesting. There is no harm in giving it a shot. Tsunade ponders for a while. Let me do it, Tsunade. I will take part in bet instead of you. Aizuna walks in front of A. Do you have any problem, unruly A? Aizuna raises one of his eyebrows. Damn it, he has to interfere with this. I almost got her. No, no, I don't. A shakes his head. I do. I am sorry, Kare, I can't win against this monster. A close his eyes. Chapter 125, Side Story, Hayaga Affair Part 3, Inside the Hayaga Compound. Hiruzen is sitting in front of Hayashi, Hisashi, and their father Hiroshi as he discusses the proposal of Kumo Head Ninja joining the birthday party of Hineda. Hokage Sama, are you sure this is a good idea? Hayashi questions him. Hayashi. Kanaha had signed a peace treaty with the Kumo. We have to show hospitality to their head ninja to strengthen the peace treaty. Hiruzen rubs his forehead. Kanaha suffered major losses during the war. 
We can't afford to start another war. Well, if you say so, Hokage-sama, then I trust your wisdom. Our Hayaga clan will entertain the head ninja of Kumagakur. Hayashi agrees with Hiruzen. Sigh. Hiruzen sighs and departs from the Hayaga clan. Hayashi turns to Hiroshi and asks him, Father, what do you think about this proposal? Hiroshi rubs his chin as he ponders. There is something fishy about this proposal. During the previous war, Kumagakur tried to obtain our Byakugan multiple times. The incident of the Second Shinobi War is a stain on our reputation. The Byakugan of one of the main family members fell in the hands of our enemy. So, keep your guard against the Kumo ninjas. I don't trust them at all. Hiroshi suggests to Hayashi. Very well. Father, I will keep a lookout for any suspicious activity from Kumo ninjas. Later in the evening, Hayashi and Hiroshi stand near the entrance of the Hayaga compound as they welcome important guests. Shivi Abarame carries a bouquet as he greets them. Abarame clan is pleased to get the opportunity to attend the birthday party of Hayaga princess. No, the pleasure is all ours. Hayashi politely accepts the bouquet and greets him back. The leaders of the Akimichi, Yamanaka, and Nara clan enter together and present their gifts to the Hayaga group as they enter inside the Hayaga compounds. What a drag. Shikaku scratches his head as he looks at the tedious task of greeting guests. Oh, is this the reason? Nara clan barely holds any celebration. Aizuna walks beside him and greets the group. Oh, it's you, Aizunakan. Chosa nods his head and introduces Aizuna to Inoichi and Shikaku. He needs no introduction, we all are aware of his talent. The group chats for a while as Aizuna notices the Kumo group at the entrance. I will excuse myself. I just remembered some urgent work. Aizuna politely walks away from the group. Shikaku stares at Aizuna's back and mutters. Many elders in the council have termed him as the second coming of Madara Uchiha. I think they are being paranoid, chomp, chomp. Chosa chumps a large piece of meat as he replies. Aizuna meets with Yujao and signals her. The target has arrived. Monitor his every activity and relay them to me. He passes a small communication device to her. I hope these new toys of the R&D department work as they are intended to. Yujao takes the earpiece and hides it underneath her long hair. She makes some hand signs and disappears from her place. Hiding in the shadow technique. At the Hayaga entrance. Hayashi and Hiroshi greet the Kumo head ninja with a polite smile. Our Hayaga clan is pleased to have the head ninja of Kumagakur celebrate this auspicious occasion with us. Hayashi signals to one of the guards. The guard walks towards them and politely asks them. Sorry for my rude behavior, but we would have to do a thorough search of your garments to ensure the safety of the guests. Well, that's fair. The head ninja raises his head and allows the guard to search for his clothes. The guard then proceeds to search the clothes of the escort guards of the head ninja. Well, if everything is fine, then we would like to see the princess of Hayaga clan with our own eyes. He asks Hayashi. Very well, the celebration is about to start soon. Please take a seat inside. Hayashi signals to a Hayaga elder. The elder escorts the group to the VIP seating area. Uchiha clan congratulates the Hayaga clan on this auspicious occasion. Fugaku and the elders of the Uchiha clan arrive at the Hayaga clan. Fugaku passes a large bouquet to Hayashi. The pleasure is all ours. Hayashi accepts the present. Soon, all the guests arrive in the celebration with the entourage of the Kanaha elders and Hokage being the last. Inside the celebration hall. A beautiful lady carries a cute little girl in a purple kimono. The little girl is holding the finger of her mother as she looks around. The gaze of many strangers frightens her, and she hides behind her mother. Ha ha, ha ha. Indeed, the princess of the Hayaga clan is as beautiful as described by the villagers. The head ninja laughs as he converses with the Hokage. Hiruzen nods his head in agreement. So, she is the Hayaga princess. There is no cursed seal on her forehead. Which means it is an opportunity for Kumo. The head ninja cooks a devious scheme in his mind. Aizuna looks at the frightened expression of Hineda and thinks to himself. Hineda lacks confidence, even as a child. After introducing Hineda, her mother carries her away from the crowd. I forgot to give her my present. Aizuna takes a small ice doll from his storage scroll. He walks towards Hineda and smiles at her. Happy birthday little Hineda. He presents the doll to Hineda. Oh, it's you, Aizunakan. The lady recognizes him. Will Tsuneda-sama attend the celebration? She asks him. I think she will. Aizuna nods her head. He had met with Hineda's mother multiple times in the Leaf Hospital, and Tsunade was the one who delivered Hineda. Hineda accepts the doll and curiously stares at it. It, it is made of popsicle. I will have to freeze it or, it will melt. Aizuna pats her head. No, it is a special doll. It won't melt so, there is no need to freeze it. Hineda cutely nods her head and runs towards Niji. Niaizen. Niji Niaizen, look at my new doll. Be careful, Lady Hineda, or you will hurt yourself. Niji chases after her. I hope Tsunade will bring Naruto with her. Aizuna stares at the interaction of Niji and Hineda. He notices the cursed seal on Niji's head. Looks like. Some changes are needed. BZZZT. Static noises. His earpiece crackles. Aizuna receives the message as he creates a small illusion around himself. Captain? The escort guards of the head ninja just left his side. After separating from him, they used a secret technique to hide their presence. But. I can still sense their chakra. For now, monitor their every activity and inform me. I will keep an eye on the head ninja. Over and out. BZZT. 
Aizuna silently flickers towards the head ninja. So, he has sent his goons to map the Hayaga compound, thus making it easy for the kidnapping. Aizuna hides his presence and continues to monitor the head ninja. Later at night, the party is finally over and one by one all the guests depart from the Hayaga compound. Hayashi and Hiroshi bade farewell to them. Outside the Hayaga compounds, the head ninja listens to the report of his guards and nods. Good, we have mapped the entire Hayaga clan, it is time to put our plan in action. You two depart for the land of hot water and inform Reikijsama. I will kidnap the Hayaga princess. Yes, sir. The escort ninjas bows their heads and flickers out. The head ninja recalls the map of the Hayaga compound and scales the wall. He infiltrates the compound and lurks behind a tree as he eavesdrops on the conversation of servants. Ha, it was such an exhausting event. There was so much work to be done for this celebration. My back is hurting from so much work. One of the servants rubs his back. Yes, I am also exhausted. Even Lady Hineda fall asleep, such a poor child, she has to face so many strange people for the first time. The servant continues to do their chore. This is my chance, the elders of the Hayaga clan are busy with the guests. I won't get such an opportunity again. The head ninja makes some hand signs. Hiding in the water jutsu, his body turns into a puddle of water and disappears from the place. The head ninja arrives in front of Hineda's room. So, this is the location. He enters the room and notices a sleeping Hineda. There is a peculiar doll in her hand. He makes some hand signs and taps on Hineda's forehead. Fwoosh. He hears a strange noise and a flash. What was that? The head ninja looks around. It must be my imagination. He shakes his head and picks up Hineda. Now, she won't wake up for a while. I can't allow her to wake up and make any noise and ruin my plan. Whoosh. He jumps out of the window and flickers out from the Hayaga compound. Hmm. An uneasy feeling wells up in Hayashi's heart. Biakugan. Hayashi activates his Biakugan and surveys his surroundings. He notices the head ninja of Kumo running away from the Hayaga compound with Hineda on her shoulders. This bastard. How dare he. I knew it. His intentions were not good. Hayashi dashes after the head ninja of Kumagakur. 